And I also just would like to note that the meeting um, is being live streamed. So we'll move into some of the procedural parts of the meeting. Uh, so we'll go through apologies. Um, are there any apologies this morning? No. Um, so I don't need to move any apologies. Conflict of interest declarations. I call on members to declare any conflicts of interest that they may have in relation to any agenda items on the agenda. Nope. Confirmation of the minutes. I move the motion that the Strategy and Policy Committee approve the minutes of the Strategy and Policy Committee meeting held on the 13th of February 2020, having been circulated, and that they be taken as read and confirmed as an accurate record of that meeting. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Fitzsimons. I now put the motion which has been moved and seconded. So we are going to try the electronic voting. There have been a few issues this morning, but this is our test run. So you know what to do. It looks different. Yeah, it's reset. It's had a reset. Yeah. We got. Right, so that's um, carried. Um, and I don't have any items that are not on the agenda. So we're going to move uh, now into public participation. Um, we first have um, Dame Winnie Luamano Laban um, coming to speak about the Fale Malaya proposal. So, Nai Mai Winnie, if you'd like to come forward and, um, and speak to us about the Fale Malaya. You can bring them with you. Nai Mai Hare Mai. We, we're very pleased that you've come today. Has <laughs> everyone got a seat? Welcome everybody and thank you for taking the kind time to come in this morning to talk to us about this very exciting project. Um, so you've got 10 minutes and if you did want to leave some time in there for questions, um, They'd be probably quite welcome, I think. But yeah, cut a few. Uh, kia ora, tāno falava, nisa bolavanaka. Uh, very warm Pacific greetings to you all. Uh, thank you to you, Councillor Day, and to Mayor um, Andy Foster for supporting this opportunity for us to share this vision that's taken a very long time and hard work to arrive at this point. Um, I just wanted to share with you that we have all stakeholders in Wellington represented with us today, including our esteemed trustees who are around this table. So all represent finance, uh, business, uh, community, and uh, engineering, and all the rest. So, um, our vision is to, and just to add to what Adrian Orr said uh, when we presented earlier this week, is to build a 21st century uh, Pacific Whale Malai in the heart of Wellington's parliamentary precinct. A Whale Malai is a sacred communal space for Pacific people. A Whale Malai in our capital city will provide a point of reference and a place of belonging for all communities across New Zealand and the Pacific region. The objectives of the Whale Malai project is to establish an authentic Pacific space for Pacifica and all communities, to promote understanding and appreciation of Pacifica culture's arts and values, to inspire our young Pacific people, and some of them are here this morning, to connect and achieve in higher education and beyond, to provide a focal point that appropriately recognises and facilitates the role of Aotearoa New Zealand as a Pacific nation to provide a sought-after space for business to engage with Pacifica and to be a venue of choice for functions and me meetings and to contribute to resolving the shortage of public venues in Wellington. The Whale Malai will be designed to be an anchor for our Pacifica identities in the parliamentary precinct in the heart of the capital city. It will be a place of belonging for all New Zealanders. New Zealand is a Pacific nation, and Pacific communities have shaped and contributed enormously to our nation. And yet Wellington, our capital city, has no landmark that reflects our Pacifica presence and identity in this place. 
So the Whanau Malai complex will have the capacity to host also conferences, international meetings, specific forums, educational, artistic and cultural events for our city, for university, for government, private sector and community organisations. Our capital city, and I was born in Wellington, 60 plus years ago, is an international hub that connects Aotearoa New Zealand to the world. Nowhere is this connectivity clearer than in our relationship with the Pacific. The Pacific is an essential part of New Zealand's identity, yet our capital city does not have a significant landmark that represents this important relationship. So as Adrian Orr said, the paper's thorough. We are reliant on Wellington City Council's support to unlock this opportunity. Significant resource and effort and volunteers especially on the trust, and hours has been spent on bringing this immense opportunity. We'll be happy to answer questions. Nga mahi. Thank you. Um, Mayor Foster. <laughs> Wendy, lovely to see you here and uh, see all the team here. Um, my question simply is, we've yet to see any picture in terms of the scale of the building on the site. Do we have anything? Okay. And how many people is intended to accommodate, roughly speaking? Uh, it's roughly uh, around 400 as a venue. Um, uh, we have sized that in the site and it fits. Uh, it also fits with uh, pedestrian and, and cycleways either side of the building to allow connectivity uh, along the original Bunny Street. Do you have anything, anything in, a, in any diagrammat, diagrammatic shape? Because the only, thing, only picture I've ever seen from several different meetings has been that one at night. And that's it. So I've never seen any other picture beyond that. So is there anything that we can see? Um, my question. No, nothing's been brought today. I'm not, not sure if there's anything in the papers that you've been... Okay. So Andy, just to add that we've done some conceptual drawings. The issue is we're hamstrung by funding. MCH are sitting on 10 million that we've put a capital bid, a, a bid in, and the university also, because they're waiting on a letter from Wellington Sister City Council to support the Fale Malayan principle. And we need to pay people to further design and go to market on I, it. I get that. It would be helpful if you could show us the conceptual drawings, it would be nice. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Mayor, um, Paul Rudy Mount here. Hey, look, um, yeah, as, as uh, Dame Winnie just mentioned, this decision that's being made today will unlock those funds to be able to satisfy these questions that you do have. Um, in the development stage, which WSP Opus have been working on, the conceptual side's there. Um, basically, we're sort of thinking about 12 months to be able to do that development of that, and that's really what we're asking for here. I feel that it's a low bar at the moment. If we can get to unlock this through MCH as well as Victoria University, it'll be able to get, answer all these questions that you have as well as we. Thank you, Councillor Fitzsimons. Yeah, you talked about um, how long this has been in the making. Can you just kind of expand on that and also just um, outline what the risks would be if the council didn't go with that um, in-principle support that, that you're asking for today? We all know that Aotearoa New Zealand is a Pacific nation. We don't sit in other oceans but the Pacific. The indigenous people are Māori and they're Polynesian, they're Pacific. New Zealand is a Pacific people. We are hamstrung because we have worked so hard and for so long to get funding from central government and the university. All we need is a letter from Wellington City Council to support the project in principle because we can't move to the next stage and answer a lot of questions that people are raising until we have the funding. Yeah, so I think the other issue too is the Pacific community have contributed enormously to this country. Whether it be working on the roads or the arts or the sports or academia, Adrian or his mother is Cook Island. He's governor of the Reserve Bank. So for me, it's not as if they haven't contributed to a country which is a Pacific nation located in the Pacific Ocean. And that's all we are humbly asking for, is support from the Wellington City Council for Legion Principle. Um, Councillor Calvert. Um, thank you. Um, but as I understood, it's not just about in principle that a Fala E is established in Wellington City. It's actually on the particular site of Bunny Street. Is that correct? I mean, what would happen if we said, look, we agree in principle we'll support a, um, a Fala E in Wellington City, 
Um, but if we said, but not on Bunny Street, what, what would what would be the impact of that? There's no other site, Councillor Calvert, but Bunny Street. Okay. Um, and just one other question. Um, it, it, I just wonder whether Vic Uni and, and the Ministry are sort of pushing it back onto us. They could release funds now for you to be able to provide some further design to give us a level of comfort how it might fit in that space or in that precinct. Um, is, is there a possibility that they could release some funds for you at least to be able to um, provide some worked up drawings? Good morning, I'm Lise Montgomery, CFR at the University. We've already committed and invested 400 odd thousand to date and if we can receive additional in principle support today, there will be another tranche of investment made by the University. <coughs> Ministry of Culture and Heritage have been very clear they are looking for the in principle support from Wellington City Council as support for our central government bid of $10 million and without that uh, they are highlighting that there's a very high risk it won't proceed. Um, can I just ask, could you just explain what the 400k that you need, that you need spent on? Uh, it's all the initial uh, geotech, initial thinking on design, business casing support. Uh, we've put, um, in addition to the free labour of my fellow trustees, uh, any form of consultancy, initial legal advice, anything there has been to date funded uh, within that. Um, kia ora. Um, I do have a question too. Um, so I think people may not be aware of how much community support is behind this. Um, it's I, I'm aware. Oh, I'm aware looking at this, but which is which is fantastic. Look at all the waving, and I know that we. I know that we're going to hear from um, from uh, the next group is going to also probably be talking to us about that. But from your perspective, um, this goes in a wide direction as far as support. Can you speak to the support and the sort of I guess the the, um, the feeling in the community around this project and what it's what it's bringing for the Pacifica community? Okay. Why don't some of you speak? Uh, good morning, Karen Rangi, trustee. One of the really exciting things about um, the idea of the Whale Malai uh, is the excitement that it's generated across our community, across a number of different ethnic communities, businesses, uh, different Pacific groupings. At the thought of having a home and a, and a connection, a very visible connection to um, this beautiful city that we live in, and so um, part of the work driven by um, Dame Lua Manavau, but certainly with the rest of us trustees, has been to work far and wide, right across the different, the many different communities within our wider Pacific community and the public and private sector organisations attached to them. As one of the examples here, we've got represented Creative New Zealand who are excited about the chance to have a home for Pacific artists uh, here in Wellington. So that's just an example of one group. But boy oh boy, um, we've been working long and hard to, again, to check with our community that this is something that they really want because it's really important. Thank you. Bye. If I can just add to that, um, there's a lot of, we talked about education and, and, and educational communities, but the high schools, if we look at the high schools here in Wellington, St Mary's, St Cats, I chair the board of Wellington College. Um, and just a quick story for you is, you know, every year for the last four years, there's been a normal Madai for the Māori students. We have 10% that are Māori. So 185 boys go normal every year. And we go around all the different Madai. This year we did Oranga Madai. Last year we did Wainui. Um, the year before that we did Pipitia, which is fantastic. Our Pacifica boys, which is 95, went to Kaitoki for the third year in a row to camp. Now there's nothing wrong with that. But the sense of belonging for our boys to feel that mm -hmm. this is who we are, what I do know is it will make a difference for all of these colleges, just to be able to have a home where they can go to, that they can sense that this is who we are. The second part that I want to add is around the business community. I chair the board of um, Wellington Pacifica Business Network. And um, currently, we've been very fortunate to be uh, to be housed at the Whariwaka, which has been fantastic. And the Iwi have been very kind. But for us to be able to have a house that is one of ours, that showcases who we are, our cuisine, our culture, would be absolutely amazing. And, and the success of the Whariwaka, as you know, my company runs the Whariwaka, the point of difference is that it is cultural. Mm. And that's why we've been very, very busy. And I believe the Pacifica um, failure will be exactly the same. So that's for, just from my side. Kia ora. 
Kelvin. Yeah, hello. The other thing, oh, sorry, Simon, you go. Okay, Simon Tyler, I'm a trustee. I'm, I run a, a superannuation fund and have been in finance all my life. The world has changed. This is a big partnership. We have the City Council, the Ministry of Cultural and Heritage, the University, and businesses will want to be involved with this. Yeah. The, 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 co the code of conduct and culture of the finance industries have been terrible over the years. They will want to, they will want to contribute to this. So I'm very confident that when we have to raise our amount of money, we will be able to go out there and do that. But it needs support from all the four people at the time. And that's where Winnie's saying, today we're at a little stepping stone because if we can't have the land, we can't raise the 15 million, which we're very confident we can raise from the business communities. And the other thing I also wanted to acknowledge is some of our church leaders behind us, uh, the co contribution via the Pacific community and no doubt other faiths um, to to the city is, is, is enormous. The second thing is that we have from 0 to 14 the fastest growing ethnic growth rate in population are Pacific. 10% of the region growth is Pacific. So this is very, very exciting. And also the student associations at the university, they're all supportive. And um, we're quite emotional, actually, because this is also about New Zealand. It's about all of us. Kia ora. Um, kia ora. Um, Priscilla, as you say, I'm a trustee in the trust. And it just... Um, Clarify. I'll, I'll just reiterate what Liz said. So that what we're sort of asking for is just the agreement and principle of the council to progress further discussions. So, of course, any final decisions on appropriate sites and agreements in terms of the land will still take place as part of the normal consenting processes and other agreements between the trust and the council. So, just asking for that agreement and principle so that we can do those next steps. So. Thank you. Ka play. Ngā mahi mai ahā kia koutou. We have run out of time now, so but thank you very much for coming in and for um, telling us a bit more. Again, we appreciate that many of you came in on Tuesday as well to answer our many questions, so thank you. And um, we're going to get on to debate in a few minutes. We'll just have another public submission from the Pacific Advisory Group. So thank you. So tēnā kōrua, um, Jocelyn kōrua ko Anthony, I understand Jocelyn, is it Jocelyn Anthony? That's what I had on the list. If we, maybe not. Um, welcome, thank you. We got Anthony. Kia ora. Thank you very much for coming in. So you've got 10 minutes as well and I'm sure there will be some questions, so thank you. Good morning, Wellington City Council. I acknowledge you, Madam Chair, our councillors and our council officers. And I'd also like to acknowledge our community. Yeah. And I also would like to thank here on either side of me, um, in the absence of our Deputy Chair Anthony, who has been called out for a community crisis. Um, this morning, we have two representatives of our group. We have Kira here, who represents our Melanesian community, and we also have here Pastor Asiri Kaur, who is one of two um, Pacific representatives, um, and also represents in terms of the church perspective into the group. Um, firstly, uh, secondly, also, I'd like to acknowledge the Falio Malai Trust, who have presented just before us, um, to acknowledge them and commend them, actually, for this very, very important work. And I'd actually like to open up a presentation this morning with a quote from Dr. Alvin uh, Mitukulena, whom some of you here would know, um, who has very deep roots into the Pacific community here in Wellington. Um, he's saying, thank you for the opportunity for us to be able to come to present to you an issue that has been very close to the heart of the Pacific Advisory Group for a very, very long time. And I truly thank our community members who are sitting behind us. Um, I say Nisambula Vinaka to you, Talofalava, Malolele Kirana. Why are we here, the Pacific Advisory Group? We are here to advocate and support for the Falio Malai because we truly believe in what it represents, not just for us Pacific Islanders, Wellingtonians who have Pacific descent, who call Wellington home, but we believe as well in the benefit that it brings to this great city that we call home. So we are here seeking, supporting the Father Malai Trust, that letter of support in principle for us to continue as part of the Wellington City Council to allow this thing to follow through. Um, as you all know, this is actually, I think, the second time that we have presented our Pacific Advisory Group, our support for Falio Malai, that we are one of many Pacific Island groups that have supported 
the Fali project for many, many years. Um, I sit here in, when I reflect back, there are many advisory groups, specific advisory groups that have sat here before me, many chairs that have sat here before me, and they have also, to previous mayors and deputy mayors and councils, have conveyed our deep-rooted heart for this project and why we need to have the Fale here in Wellington. Um, it's symbolic of us specific people and the tremendous amount of contribution we have made to the city, but it is also something for us, all Wellingtonians, where we get to celebrate and we also get to share. Um, so I'm going to leave it now and I'm going to put it back to you for questions. Yeah. Kia ora. Um, we've got a Pātai, a question from Councillor Calvert. Um, thank you for coming in and, and the work you do on the advisory group. Um, um, obviously, it's been a topic on your agendas for, for some time. Um, have you had any advice from officers about the um, viability of that particular site of Bunny Street for this? Have you had any advice from council um, on that? Specifically from, one, from our council officers, no. Right. Um, so what we have done is that we've just completely gone with the, because the Falut Malai group have also presented to us twice, mm -hmm. uh, we have been invited to a presentation at Victoria University, they have also made the time to come and present to the Pacific Advisory Group. So everything we have seen so far and everything that has come from our community, we have conveyed that across to um, the Trust as well as to our councillors who sit, on with our, <coughs> sit with us on the Advisory Group. But yeah, going back to your question, um, Councillor, no. no. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Pennett. Thank you and warm Pacific greetings. And um, yes, I can attest to the fact that you've been wanting this for many years. Um, it, it has always been a long-term demand. Um, look, um, it's a fantastic project. I'm going to be supporting it. I'm just wondering if you've had assurances that there will be um, low-cost or free access to the Vale just to allow Pacifica groups uh, to come in and um, meet and, and do whatever they need to do. Because I know it has to run commercially as well. I mean, obviously, the, there's bills to be paid. Um, thank you, Council. I think the thing that we have to take note here is the community does have a stake in this. Um, and one of that, you know, another way that that is quite evident is that we have the community being represented here, and not just the Pacific community, these are leaders of Pacific communities. These are people who have long standing and are highly respected in the communities. I think if we were to have um, the community here, we might need to take up the entire floor and maybe a bit more. <laughs> um, so I think going back to that, if you look at us, yeah, if you look at us, um, that we're standing on behalf of and advocating on behalf of our Pacific people. And yes, um, going also with regards to the community and a rate of some sort, that entirely sits with Falio Malai and that also, I believe that they're going to be bringing that back to us because we do have some measure of continuous um, engagement and participation with this work. Um, Councillor O'Neill. Um, kia ora, Kiera, Jocelyn and Pastor Siri. Um, I was just wondering if you would be able to speak to the value or the impact that this will have to the Pacifica community and I was wondering if you could also talk a little bit about um, what it would mean for Wellington City Council to be supporting um, your communities in this way as well. Thank you, Councillor. I'm actually going to leave that to my, uh, the members to speak, and I'll, we'll start here with Kira. Yeah, I think just reiterating what has already been said by the Trust, a sense of identity, a Pacific sense of identity is absolutely crucial to the well-being of a community. Um, I think that from our perspective, from the Pacific Advisory Group, supporting the Trust and this project is um, about identity, it's about belonging, it's about connectivity. It's about being seen in our community. It's about ownership. Um, I think it's very important that we have a place for Pacific communities to express themselves artistically, um, uh, whether it's um, economically, um, so you know, socially. Um, there's so much that Wellington City can benefit from this project and from having a venue like this here. Um, I know I'm the Melanesian community uh, representative and I represent the Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia, Vanuatu. We have about, and Fiji over here, 
We have over 14 million people in the Pacific, and yet here we are in New Zealand. How many people are we here? We represent a huge amount of people in the Pacific. And I think this is a really important thing to, to follow through and support because we're not just representing Aotearoa, we're representing the whole of the Pacific here. Thank you, Councillor, for the, um, the values that we carry and I truly believe those, the first generation that came and arrived in this place, see this place as their home, have a vision for us, the generation that come after to also uh, be part of a city that is more vibrant and uh, um, very multicultural. Um, as you can see here in the presentation before us and over all of us here, that we truly support uh, something they set in place for our people to be able to see themselves here and see a heart. And we know the Wellington City uh, represents the heart of New Zealand. And everyone that comes in here, they feel welcome with the kind of environment they set in place in here. You encounter people, tourists that come to New Zealand, they say something about Wellington is different from every other city in New Zealand. I arrive in this place and I make this place as my home. 30 years ago, and I see something about Wellington, people ask me this question, why you came from Fiji and you chose Wellington, a windy city, to be part of, to be part of your life now? And my, my answer is, I love the weather. <laughs> But, but in reality, there's something about this city, the heart that is carried, it has that thing that people love. And uh, that's, it, it matches the, the values that we carry. So uh, all that we've said, we truly believe that you will be with us in, in the things that we're asking for this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Free. Well, I think actually probably my questions have probably been answered and um, but I do, I do remember how much this has been a topic on our agendas, the two terms I served as um, the Councillor Representative for the Pacific Advisory Group. But my question was really about the, just the comfort around that you'll, you'll have enough access for your people, because I know also Pacific people, um, you know, they're often uh, the communities, they need something that's affordable and um, big enough and um, available enough for all the things that you might want to use for it. Mm. Are, are you sort of have a, how much comfort do you have that this will meet the needs of your communities? Um, thank you, Councillor, for bringing the question because I, um, your question actually goes right to the root of the heart of this project, the fale, what it represents. It's a gathering place. Um, the context of the fale, it is pacifica. Um, we look at Wellington, we're a very multicultural, um, very multicultural, very diverse city. Um, even within our own Pacific communities, we have people of Pacific, Asian, and um, Middle Eastern descent, we're so mixed. Um, but when you look at the Fale, and you've also heard in numerous presentations from the Fale Malaya Trust, there are the technicalities and all the other high levels of the stuff that are being discussed, but you've got to hone in on the heart and the spirit of the thing, and the core of it is actually the community. So that's why we are really grateful for this trust. You know, we have this caliber of people who are actually going ahead and doing the hard yards for us in a sense, but they're carrying our voice, they're carrying our values, they're carrying our perspective right through because at the end of the day, um, our Pacific way is that we are not people that entertain exclusion, we are people that are very inclusive. So at the heart of the Fale of the Malai is the spirit of who we are as specific people. So I don't believe that your, um, what you're asking of would be something that's going to be excluded mm. or let alone be separated of the Fale. Yeah? Oh, tēnā koutou. Thank you very much, um, Kira, Jocelyn and Pastor, um, Pastor Asiri. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing your um, your thoughts with us today and your support for the Fale Malai project. All right, so I'm going to I need to reorder the um, items on the agenda on my paper. Uh, so understanding order 3.9.2, I'd like to rearrange the agenda items as follows. And so we're going to start with item 2.5, which is the Fale Malai, then 2.2, which is the um, name change for um, Te Whare Bodhi Street, and then item 2.1, 2.3, 2.4, it's up on the screen, 2.6 and 3.1. We have a very full morning. I suspect we might be going slightly into the afternoon. Um, 
because we also do have um, some people coming in to answer questions around item 2.1. They're probably already well, they're on their way in a wee while. So we're going to start with um, the Whale Malai proposal, item 2.5, and um, I'm going to ask Mia Foster to introduce this paper. Thanks, Councillor Day. Um, look, I'm uh, pleased to introduce this. Uh, by way of background, the paper's actually been requested by the Trust. Uh, they've obviously been working for some time. You've heard a bit of the background, uh, the background to that. It's been a, a long gestation to get to this point. Uh, and so uh, in that light, I think it's right that we actually have the paper in front of us because it gives the opportunity for the Trust to be able to take some further steps. Um, I, when I mean, I've been aware of this for some time. I think, Sarah, you said it's been an item on the Pacific um, Advisory Group agenda for, uh, for many, many years, many occasions. Uh, as a councillor uh, in the last train, I was sort of vaguely aware that there was this idea. I sort of had this vague concept of a, a building that kind of looked vaguely like the picture that I've seen, but no idea of location or how it fitted in with anything else. Uh, and so I met with... Um, I think it was, it was Winnie and some of the, it was Ad, Winnie and Adrian, I think it was, wasn't it, that, that, that meeting. Uh, and officers briefed me on it to say, you know, what is this, um, you know, what is this, because, and they said apparently they had briefed the council previously, but several of us hadn't been here, so for some of us it was completely new as to, to what it was. So that was, that was the background for me at that point in time. So I was aware of the concept, but not of, the, of any of the detail. Uh, I just want to say congratulations to, um, to the Trust and to Winnie for the, the passion and the dedication you put into this over quite some period of time. Uh, and clearly it has uh, enormous community support. I think it's a fantastic proposal and I will come and talk to the, uh, the recommendations very, very shortly. Um, but I, I also see there are significant challenges with the site and I certainly, uh, I went along uh, with the, the, the prospect of, you know, to a trust meeting, the first trust is, you know, if you're a prospective trustee, uh, the first thing you say is, are there any risks in it? And there are risks, it's very, very clear there are risks, and the paper says that, but I'll come, come back to that fairly, fairly shortly. Um, so, to the, um, uh, to the recommendations. The first bit is, uh, well, obviously receiving the information. Second one, supporting the establishment of the Fale Malai in Wellington, and I, I think we should absolutely be very strong in our support for the concept of a Fale Malai in Wellington. I think you've heard many of the reasons by, about that, you know, the, the issues around sense of identity, uh, very, very strong. This is a very strong um, wish of a large part of our community. Uh, and I think also the concepts which have been uh, talked about, or the, the things which you talked about, about showcasing cuisine and culture, uh, about, and about sense of identity, I've already mentioned, and about being capital city, which is a, you know, we are a capital city in the, in the South, but we are a South Pacific nation, ultimately. Quite a long way south in the Pacific, but we are a South Pacific nation, and sometimes we feel very far south when it gets cold. But we are a South Pacific nation none, nonetheless, and I'm, I'm pleased that you, you're really much enjoying the, the weather down here. <laughs> 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 that was a reason to, to live in Wellington. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed, indeed. Um, the, no, the recommend, if you go through the recommendations, they're simply to say, recommendation four is simply to say that we're noting that that is the trust preferred site. Um, and then that we, in five, we're noting that, that it will trigger a number of council processes. I think, make no, no bones about it, those processes actually are really risky. And there's a high chance of the process, or the project not getting through those processes, in, in, my, in my view. Um, and I think that the paper alludes to the risks in the, the project. Uh, when I saw the, the the project, on, you know, the, the, the Fale picture, and we've, I've only ever seen one picture, which is that, that at night picture. That's why I was asking those questions about, can you show us what it actually looks like on the site, because I actually don't have a feel for that. Um, but I think there are some risks there. Uh, and the trust is, I think, more appraised of those risks than they were maybe a few months ago. Um, and this is clearly their preferred site. Um, but I did ask officers if they can have a, at least a look around to see if there are any other options anywhere in the city that, that would do the, do the job as well. Um, so I think we should continue to look at those just in case. Uh, there is no financial contribution in six being sought uh, and we still have decisions to make uh, in terms of this is not a decision to sell and lease or sell or lease, this is still a, an in principle decision. So eight is simply saying it's agreeing in principle for the Farland Malai Trust to continue investigating that site, to continue doing the work on that site and then they will be able to come to a view of yes we can proceed with the site or actually no we can't proceed with this site. 
Uh, but I think we need to be really clear. I mean, Hart says one thing, Head says you've got to be really aware of the risks of this project and we will be irresponsible not to point those risks out. Um, hopefully those risks are able to be overcome, but we do need to be quite clear that they are there. Um, I would certainly like to encourage the Trust, which is where I was going with my questions, to give us, you know, you don't have to spend millions of dollars doing a basic layout of what a building might look like on the site. Do that work at least up front uh, and it gives you a bit of a feel for what the building would look like on the site so we're all well aware of that and we go, yep, that's brilliant, or mm, yeah, there's some challenges with that. I know uh, the, there were questions asked earlier about the, you know, the um, how it would fit in terms of ability to pass and repass along that site for walking and cycling. It's not that wide a site. It's a road width. Uh, so that you know, that's what I really want to see is how it looks on the site and how it feels on the site, because that starts giving you a feel for how it will get through or not get through the resource consent process and the road stopping process. Uh, there has been suggestion of a local bill. The only way I think you say a local bill is tenable, and it's a fairly high bar. We've had that advice from Moana. Uh, it's a fairly high bar to justify that. Is if essentially if the processes there are not other processes available, there are other processes available. If you used it to because you thought the other processes were not going to succeed, I think that would be problematic because it basically says we don't believe that it will get through a resource consent process and we don't believe it will get through a road stopping process. So I think a local bill becomes a really, really challenging test to get to that point. So I'm delighted to support it in principle. Um, I would say, um, you know, it's, I think it's good that we uh, allow and facilitate the trust continuing to do the investigatory work, uh, but I think we also need to be alive to the fact that there are some risks in this project. And if those risks come to pass, then, you know, I would say we should work with every possible endeavour to try and make sure there is an other alternative site so we do have a far for our Pacifica community and for all of us to appreciate. Happy to move. Kia ora, have you got a seconder? O'Neill, do you? Yeah. How about Councillor O'Neill, you're on the Pacific Advisory Group, would you like to second, would you like to speak to it now? Um, or you can wait till later if you want to respond to things that other people maybe say here. That could be a good idea. Um, <laughs> Councillor Fitzsimons. Yeah, look, I just want to um, start by acknowledging the Fale Malai Trust and also the Pacific Advisory Group for the huge amount of dedicated effort that you've put into this project. And I think um, if as a city we relied on the number of volunteer hours that have gone into this for all our major projects, nothing would ever get done. And it's just because of your huge dedication and commitment to this that, um, that it's here today. And uh, I guess I did want to just say uh, a few things about the project. I completely acknowledge the um, the points that you've made about the value of this to the Pacific communities, and I'm very <laughs> conscious that uh, communities need a space to be a community, and that's really what we're trying to provide with this Fale. Um, I also think that thank you because you're helping us solve a problem for the city, and that is that we don't have enough venues, particularly of the size of uh, what the Fale will be. So you're actually um, it's a very very valuable contribution. Uh, to Wellington as a city as well. And I guess um, I did just want to mention uh, some of the things that uh, Adrian all mentioned in terms of the four pillars uh, to remind people of the value of this economically. It's going to contribute to Wellington's economy. It's going to be attractive for visitors. People are looking increasingly for a point of difference in venues that they use, and this will be a wonderfully uh, creative and inclusive point of difference. And also the environmental impacts. We know that climate change is affecting the Pacific disproportionately and this will as Adrian outlined um, just allow a really great opportunity for people to have very challenging and difficult conversations and also the social cohesion that this will bring I think one of the biggest challenges facing our country is social cohesion and the more that we can do to encourage social cohesion in our city uh, the better and finally uh, the diversity and inclusion I am um, I really welcome the opportunity to meet with with other, uh, other Pacific cultures and discuss uh, very challenging issues, issues facing us. 
Um, and I guess I just wanted to put this in the context of some of the other projects that I've seen in my short time as a councillor, things like the museum stand at the Basin Reserve, which people were originally suggesting could be demolished, that it was impossible to do the work required. Um, Alex Moore Park, which was a complex uh, capital project involving a whole range of different sports clubs that for a while looked like it was going to go off track. And also the Town Hall, which we all know about had many, many problems, including budget. So I would say with your um, perseverance and your incredible persistence that if, if those other projects can find a way through, and there will be bumps, I'm sure, I'm sure that with your, um, your su deeply respectful and polite model of perseverance and hard work and inclusion um, that you will be able to get this over the line. And I think as councillors we can find plenty of reasons why not to do all sorts of things, but what we should be doing is finding reasons to do things. And um, I thank you for giving us a reason to do something really great for Wellington. Very well said, Councillor Matthews. <laughs> Uh, kia ora koutou, colleagues, and I'd like to return the warm Pacific greetings to our our guests, both uh, uh, the Trust, our Pacific Advisory Group, and uh, the friends who have come along. Um, welcome to you all, and thank you for all of your work. Um, I spoke at a forum last night about uh, diversity and inclusion, and there was something that was said at that that really struck with me. I was sitting next to um, someone from sort of the corporate world from Kiwi Bank, and it was we were talking about gender mainly. And he was he was uh, it was a man, and he was saying that he identified that what he needed to do was look who was not at the table, go and talk to the people who are not at the table and make room at the table. And uh, it's, it seems very appropriate uh, to this for me because both when I look around our council table of you know many, many generations, the Pacific people have been underrepresented in terms of our elected officials, but also at a senior officer level in our organisation that Pacific people are underrepresented. And here we have an opportunity to literally make room, to make a room, to make a whale. And um, I thank you for the opportunity that you are giving for us to make room for you. And uh, I just also think the calibre of the people that you have involved and the, you know, the work that you've put in. And, I, you know, I feel very, I'm an optimist. Uh, I feel very confident uh, that with these calibre of people that we will be able to work through any of the problems. I extend to you my commitment to, yes, there are risks, yes, there will be challenges, but um, as a council, as, as a councillor, um, I'm, you know, willing, I extend my hand to be able to work with you to resolve those in any way that I can. Um, and really, yeah, just to say that I look forward to seeing the day that we celebrate at the opening of this um, community facility and all of that hard work and to, to be able to see the, the value that this will continue to give for our community. So thank you very much and it will be my absolute pleasure to support it. Uh, Councillor Pennant. Kia ora and more Pacific greetings and I'd like to strongly support Councillor Matthew's comments about making room at the table. Um, Dame Winnie made a humble request. Um, Dame Winnie, you don't need to make a humble request. It's actually, I think, our obligation to do this, uh, what has been requested today. Um, Pacifica people have a right to be here as do our Muslim brothers and sisters as we come up to March 15th and so on. Um, and we need to take a strong stance against uh, exclusion, discrimination and racism. Um, also, Councillor Fitzsimons, you're right, they're actually giving us something. All we have to do is give a bit of land and we get another <laughs> venue. Um, it's like the Chinese garden, actually. Um, instead of picking over it, we should actually be grateful when people um, give things to us. Um, I strongly support the comments about um, the appropriateness of the symbolism, and I think that's very, very important. In other words, we have a right to be here. This is where our future um, in the parliamentary precinct is a good location. I obviously have issues around sea level rise and they're <laughs> going to have to move at some point. But nevertheless, I'm sure we can get some news out of the site. Um, for me, this is really about restitution as well. Um, when an injustice has been done, um, things need to be paid back. And there have been active discrimination against Pacifica people, um, as well as, of course, mana whenua. So um, this is a way of... Um, making good. 
Um, as the portfolio leader for Heritage, I'm very, very comfortable uh, with having um, a beautiful new building uh, next to a historic building, possibly problematic, but nevertheless it has got um, heritage significance and I think it will add to the area rather than take it away. The last point I'd just like to make is I don't really want to hear about problems. I want to hear about challenges with solutions. I will not be supporting any amendments today which nitpick over um, the details of this project. Uh, this is what the resource consent process is for, to uh, deal with all of those issues. I think it's fine to highlight some of them, um, but that is what we have a consenting process for. And I certainly uh, would hope that uh, in expressing concerns, wherever they might come from, that we are very, very solution focused. Kia ora. All right, councillors, we've had three people speak um, for this and under um, Standing Orders 3.10.3, unless we have anyone who wants to speak against it, we can actually put it to the vote. So would you like to speak against it, Councillor Young? That's all right. I, just, I was just wanting to see where we were at. It's we can use Standing Orders to speed up meetings as well. So, Councillor Young. So, so you know, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for all the work that has gone into this um, project, and I completely understand your desire to have um, a building like this in Wellington, and, and in principle, I support the idea. It's great, although I'm very disappointed we haven't seen any concept drawings which would help, um, but I can't support it, and the reason I can't support it is we know there is a very high bar to get this project over the line um, with the, all the consents involved bec partly because it is in the parliamentary heritage precinct, precinct and I don't want to give people false hope and have them put quite a lot of money into getting going through this process knowing that it's very unlikely to get through. Um, I'm also completely opposed to the idea of privatising public land. This is land that belongs to the whole of Wellington. It's a street and I don't think we can give streets away to any community. And, and finally, the other thing is that I believe this sets a really unacceptable precedent um, from the point of view of giving land away to different groups. I think it's a great idea. You just need to find a better site. So I will be opposing it. Um, councillors, I should have explained that once we have someone say that they do want to speak against it, it goes back to how it was before. So anyone is allowed to speak. It was just to see if we were at the point where we had everybody ready to vote. Um, yes, yes. Uh, Councillor Paul. Um, Morina Kiakota Kato, um, Talofalava, Maloi Elele, um, Bola Vinaka, um, Kiaurana, and Atamaria Kiakoto. Um, yeah, I get to speak again. I was a bit worried that I wouldn't get a chance. Um, thanks to all um, that, but thank you, Councillor Young, for that opportunity. I would like to say, um, I'd like to say, as someone who's just spent three long years of my life finishing my degree down at uh, in the parliamentary precinct, that I would very much welcome some colour and vibrancy to the space because it is very sterile down there. Apart from Pipitea being around the corner, um, there isn't a lot of life um, in that space. And I'm really looking forward to um, you guys being able to bring some colour, some culture and some vibrancy to that space. So thank you. And... I do hear my colleagues' concerns around um, the different risks that come associated with this project, but I know you, Loa Manu Vao, Winnie Laban, and I've worked with you on projects, and I know your mana and your determination to succeed, and I trust that. I know that there are people on this trust who are incredible people who have been able to make miracles, and so I don't have any falter in my confidence that you'll be able to pull this off, and I'm really looking forward to it. I think this is about people having a place of belonging and a, and a place to stand and I really want to um, echo comments made by Councillor Fitzsimons around climate change because we know that our, our Pacific is in a crisis right now and as the land becomes smaller, yes we create great ocean nations but everybody needs a place to stand and everyone needs a, a place of belonging and so I support this Fale Malai and I hope that it creates a place um, of community, a place of culture, of food, everything um, for us here in Wellington. So thank you for all of your hard work, um, acknowledging the um, differences in socio-economic um, disparities for Pacific people and acknowledging that actually this is all volunteer work. Thank you for that. Thank you for this work that you do for all of us. And um, yeah, I just, again, going back to being at um, 
puppets here for three years doing my degree, that bunny street, it's not actually being used for anything nowadays. You know, there's no nobody uses that space. Hardly anyone sits out there. You know, you, you cross between the two campuses and you're lucky if, if an Uber doesn't, you know, hit you with a near miss. So I, I'd welcome a better use of the space and moreover such a beautiful cause. So nga mahi nui kia koutou katoa. Nga mahi, Councillor Foon. Uh, tēnā koutou and welcome um, our Pacific community. It is so beautiful to have you here today. Can you come to every meeting? Because I think it will be a lot more fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to echo the, um, there's not really much left to say because my colleagues have said it all, but what I do want to say is that I will be supporting us got, taking this next step with you, um, and that is because your dream is bigger than some pipes and some basic infrastructure. It is bigger than laws. It is bigger than things than th the, thin, the things that confine us. Thank you for bringing your passion here today. I support you. Councillor Free. Yeah, and, and I would like to join my thanks too. Look, it's always hard when you have a really um, strong vision and you um, you have to work against so many obstacles and they're still probably to come, but you've gone such a long way. And I can remember six years ago being on the um, Pacific Advisory Group and Ida constantly saying, what are we going to do about the whale? What are we going to do about the whale? We, we must have a whale. And um, so I will support, um, in principle, this whale. And I am reassured, and thank you for mentioning um, the cause that's dear to my heart about still having the cyc cycling and walking access available. And I've been reassured that, um, you know, the Pacific com community is right behind this and there'll be access for the kinds of cultural things, um, you know, and affordable and, and available um, places for the Pacific community to to do the things that are important to them and important to our city. So I also want to just say, um, I know from being um, in the Pacific Advisory Group how much the Pacific um, members reflected on the, the past generations who'd come to Wellington and the aspirations that your uh, family members had for you and the aspirations that you have for your children going forward, and that um, this must be a sense of great achievement that you've got this far, and I, I hope that you do see your vision realised for the sake of all those people who have been before and are still to come. But the thing that really stuck in my mind is actually something for us all, and that's that we are the capital city. And as a capital city, it's fitting that we have these important places that represent different cultures that have come here um, in our city. And I see this actually as an economic opportunity as well, that we are able to have these important places as part of our capital city. It's fitting that we have them and that, that we celebrate them. And someone said to me, oh, you know, what, what, new, what other ethnicities might want a place? And I actually said, bring it on. Yeah. Let's bring it on for every body to have their place and to celebrate the vibrancy that that actually can bring to our city and the economic and social opportunities it presents. Now I did have a small amendment, I hope it's not too late to bring it, um, and I'm actually kind of hoping that we can just accept this. It has gone through um, some discussion with, I think it's, um, uh, can you please help me with the name? Because I'll pronounce it wrong. I'm not sure who you think has Utimanu, might have had a conversation about it. Is that correct? It's had some approval that we made sure we've got it right. One thing I did notice about the paper is that normally we would have Treaty of Waitangi implications in our papers, and it's not here. And I just wanted people to note that this is a partnership, not just with Pacific people, but there are people from Mana Whenua on the trust, on the committee, and that um, they've been com those conversations have been had and that they are supportive. Um, so uh, just in case, you know, someone reading the paper didn't realise that was the case.
Um, and I said I was happy to second this amendment, but if people are happy to agree to it with the leave of the meeting, yeah. I think it's really, uh, we've already had that expressed to us, Wayne Mulligan was here representing with the Trust on Tuesday, it's very clear that there's a strong partnership and strong support and I think it is really great to, to make that clear in this paper, so I think everybody's happy to um, to share that. Thank you. Um, so I'll speak now. Um, I think everyone has actually already spoken um, really, artic- really well about the benefits of this for our community and I, I too want to acknowledge um, everyone who's come today to support this um, and I particularly want to acknowledge you Dame Winnie Laban for your passion and drive and your positivity, the way that you, you you constantly remind us of what we can be doing to do better for our community and I really appreciate your leadership and the amazing group of people that have wrapped around you, the diversity in that group is absolutely stunning, to see what we see here today and the support is very um, it's very compelling, a little bit emotional actually um, and I'd like to acknowledge Jocelyn and um, the Pacific Advisory Group um, for the amazing mahi that, that you do to support your communities. Um, it's a, it is a big job and it's a big responsibility and I really love the fact that you are partnering in with the Trust and really um, making sure that all of those voices are heard, so thank you. Um, I think, yeah, we have heard about the risks this morning um, and I think the thing we have to acknowledge as a council, it's our role to help um, to work through those those risks. It's our job to support and to guide. And Councillor Fitzsimons was very right when she pointed out the number of other projects that we've had, which probably have, some of them have been even more challenging. Um, I think the Town Hall was probably one which people wondered if they were ever going to be able to figure out. Um, and Council managed to figure it out. So I feel quite confident that Council will be able to support and to make this work. Um, so I, I feel really positive. I feel optimistic too. Um, and I think it's true, dreams can be bigger than the problems so and we can make that happen. So I'm um, totally happy to support and can't wait to see the shining lights um, down there in the future. Um, and our next speaker is Councillor Calvert. Um, thank you. Um, I'd just like to thank the Trust and the Advisory Group and the community for coming in. Um, I've spoken to a couple of you, um, and this is not an easy decision. Um, it is quite a challenging decision. Um, as some of you will know, I sometimes do think differently to my colleagues. <laughs> and, um, but, um, you know, it's one that probably kept me awake a little bit last night about how I was going to vote and what sort of things I needed to consider. So it's not just, it wasn't a black and white decision for me. Um, I absolutely support the establishment of a um, a Fale Malai in Wellington City as the capital city of Wellington and to acknowledge um, the contribution and and not only the past but the ongoing contribution of um, the Pacifica and Melanesian people to our our country and to the area of the Pacific nation. So I will support the establishment of a Falai um, Malai in Wellington City but I can't support it at this stage on Bunny Street. Um, I, uh, this obviously conversation has been going on for years and I can't understand why we have not put any money into investigating with the possibility of that site. It doesn't seem that we put any resources in. And, and look, I know it feels really good for people to support it, but actually we're governors here and we need to make sure that we are, um, you know, we we talk about robust business cases. We talk about having the information in front of us to make a decision. We don't have all the information, I believe, in front of us to say, yes, in principle, we support this um, Bunny Street site. It is part of a precinct, and it's even part of a broader precinct. If you take into account around the railway station, we have um, transport links that are still to be designed and developed and a transport hub as part of our Let's Get Welly Moving. Um, we talked, um, uh, councillors have talked about what a, a sterile space the Bunny Street is currently, and we could make better use of the space. And I think we probably could. You know, do we need a park? You know, we don't have a master plan for that site from a council perspective, for a city perspective, for the residents. And, and one of those um, opportunities could be a FLI, but it may be something else. Um, and I think what we're, what we're confusing here is the benefit of establishing 
a full MRI here in Wellington City as opposed to where it should be. Um, we talk about, well, this is all going to be sorted out with the resource concerns, but that's on the basis of the of the land being available. We've talked about how you know, the, you know we've supported other projects which had lots lots of risks, you know, town hall, basin reserve, but that was all on existing land that actually was purpose for those type of venues. So this is actually a road. This is, and this we don't have a plan about what, how we would like to see that being used in the future. Um, I don't know why we're not putting our money where our mouth is. Everyone's in support. Why aren't we funding our officers to do a piece of work and then come back to us? on the viability of the site in terms of um, a conceptual. Would you like to move an amendment? No, because, uh, no, because I, 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 no, I did think about moving an amendment, but actually I'm disappointed the way the papers come to us with very little information to start with. There's, no, there's not even a picture. There's not even a picture for the media to be a report on and say, hey, this is what's um, being proposed. What do you think? You know, um, everybody's missed it, and, and we can't even share anything. All it is is a word. Um, or a line. So, and I'm not going to move an amendment because you know you're just probably all voted down anyway. So, um, um. <laughs> thank you. So, look, I, as I said, as I will support the establishment of it. I would be happy to support any funding for our officers to do some work on the viability of the site. Taking, and this is not resource consent um, information. This is about actually how do we envisage this whole area of Wellington looking in the future, and um, and considering whether that's a, um, some of that area could be made available. Um, so there's, a, there's not enough information, so I can't support in principle the site of Bunny Street. Um, I think I'd just like to speak to the fact that what we're agreeing today is about being in principle. So I mean, I think that does actually speak to the fact that there isn't enough, there isn't the information yet because that's the process. That no, needs to I, I, I disagree. The word, not, if, not if you read it properly. Um, would you like to speak, Councillor O'Neill? Yeah. Um, Kia ora, and firstly I'd just like to really acknowledge um, the Trust, Dane Winnie Laban and the Pacific Advisory Group for your tireless patience with the Council on this one and your, and particularly your resilience in the face of sometimes really difficult, coolly, uh, potentially ignorant questions um, that you have received over the last few years. This has been an incredibly long um, battle for a lot of you. Um, I am really, really proud to support this paper today um, and I am proud to do this as one of the councillors that has been able to work with you on the Pacific Advisory Group. Um, throughout this discussions we've had many, many briefings since coming into council, even as a new council, I feel very well informed of the risks and the steps that you've taken in order to answer, answer these questions as well to the best of your abilities. Um, on Tuesday, someone spoke about this project as um, a potential way to light up an area that is often a dark part of town, a dark part of town at night that doesn't feel welcoming, it doesn't feel like people have a place to stand. Um, I am moved by your words on community today, as I often am, and I just wanted to, to um, repeat something that Pastor Asiri said, and it was to see ourselves here, to have a heart in the centre of the city, to have a heart. And I think that speaks to the movement behind this project, the community that you've got wrapped around each other, and the significance and the privilege to be able to have a building like this in Wellington. Um, in 2020, we can speak to a council that should be supporting our Pacifica community. Um, this is an aspiration that everyone in Wellington feels um, that they have a place to stand. When I first came onto council, I saw a whole bunch of communities locally and across the nation that felt like they often don't have a place to stand in a city and if there's one thing that I want to achieve it's to make sure that we have our communities that feel safe, that feel like when they put their feet on the ground that they can look around and they can see that this is your city as well. Um, I'd like to echo Councillor Matthew's comments about making space at the table and room at the table and I ask councillors to look around now and to look around our executive leadership team and the advice that we're often given and to really appreciate the tireless efforts and information that you've lended to us. Um, 
I'd like to reply to uh, one of Councillor Calvert's points. Um, the Fale Malai is not just a word. It is a significant cultural place in Wellington. It is a significant community Put order. project. Sorry, what is your point of order? Well, uh, that, that you're misrepresenting me. My uh, you did actually say that, so no, it's no, not no. accepted. No, the point of order is it, not accepted. It, it, was, it was out of context. It was the, the, my sentence was about the site, not about the fellow my no, She's decision is final, and you did say it was just a word. Uh, but it was in context of the you site. You need to stop now, Councillor Calvert, please. Well, I made my point. Um... To reiterate the importance and the opportunity that we have at this table today, um, and I would strongly encourage my colleagues to vote on this paper for in principle support as well, so that those really in depth um, answers and case studies can be brought as well to this table, and, we, and you can hopefully be um, look fully at, at all of the answers and information as well. Uh, lastly, just to, to say a big, uh, just again, a huge thank you and, um, and to leave my other governors with the thought that all of these other projects that Councillor Fitzsimmons spoke about, I do wonder whether we would be asking the same nitpicky questions if the university alone has just decided to build another lecture on Bunny Street. Um, and, uh, yeah, right. But um, my heart is with you today and I'm very, very pleased to support this and I do hope that we can continue for the quest for more answers to some of your questions as well. Um, and thank you. Okay, Councillor Rush, did you want to speak? I was proposing an amendment. Oh, have you got a second there? Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, uh, it was a handwritten one, so I, it, it needs to come up. It's but, coming up now. Oh, well, I hope it's. Hope you like it. <laughs> so, it, it just it, so so it, this is a a simple amendment to strengthen paragraph seven, and I'll, I'll just set out a few reasons. For that first of all, I really appreciate you coming in. Very excited. As a rugby player of forty years, I've had a lot of interaction with uh, and continue to, to do so. Um, I think this uh, project has potential to add tremendous value to our community, but it's very unclear as to how that might play out. Um, I'm as portfolio lead for uh, infrastructure, including uh, water. I'm very concerned that the underground network will be a tremendous barrier. But uh, as we've seen with the town hall, they, those barriers can be overcome with a lot more money, and, and that is a real concern of mine. Um, I am surprised that the papers are somewhat incomplete. Um, we're talking about this being a very dark part of town. I, I, I don't even have a sketch of a map where it is. Um, as a student of Vic University uh, currently and, and last year, is it somewhere around Rutherford House, Government House? I, I don't know. But anyway, um, I, I am quite concerned that the... Um, the recommendations will put the Wellington City Council in a very uh, difficult position um, should it not wish to go ahead and support this project. Um, I'm also concerned about let's get Wellington moving and the impact. Um, but nevertheless, I think that the calibre of people that are presented to us and the trustees uh, and the volunteers scream out to me that this needs to go another step further. So my amendment is simply to put in your mind that we will be looking at this more closely when your um, feasibility studies have been proved up and we can have another look and we can understand what sort of commercial structures might be involved in the transfer of land um, but I suspect that actually the value will uh, also say to us that gifting it will be a satisfactory outcome so Thank you, Councillor Wolf. Do you want to speak? Yep. Um, thank you, Councillor Rush, because I, I think that what you've achieved here is um, giving us the ability to and to show that there is um, this is not a sale and a, a lease agreement, and and that we're not um, giving um, expectations that. Um, 
are false expectations. It, it, it secures things. I just want to um, again thank Winnie and the team. You know, I have seen the concept designs. I have seen how it fits in. I, I, I do like it. I, I, I really um, wouldn't want to stop this at this stage. I really, I, I, if we if we can carry this off, this is going to be a good thing. This is not not going to, but I think it is a really really tough ask, and and explaining that it is a tough ask, I think you should have a plan B. I really do. I, I really think that there needs to be a plan B um, of another location, because I think that um, that. If we can achieve this, that would be great. And um, we're all committed to a, 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 a Fale Malay. And I, I, I think that you need to have a, a plan B. I just think that this is um, one of those areas where there, there's, there's a, a, a lot of potential hurdles and roadblocks. And uh, I think you know th there's also a lot of questions that need asking in relation to, to a lot of the future funding. And um, you know we as city governors have to be really, really careful, especially in the situation that we are in, in at the moment with our resilience. And I do think that this um, building um, and and all that is around it will provide resilience for the city in a, in a different way. But I think that we're, um, we, we, we need to be responsible. And that's why I think that let, let's do the feasibility. It's not a sale or lease agreement. There's a lot of water to go under the bridge as, as, as yet a lot and a lot of work to be done. But go ahead and, and you, you, you're committed to doing it. And I think that um, you should be allowed to, to get on with it. Uh, Councillor Pennett. A question of officers because I think this looks like recommendation seven. I think it's really clear. I think it looks like speak next councillor. It looks like an attempt to just make it a bit more difficult and I and I actually so from our understanding orders really given it's so similar, uh, can that thank you. Could I um, ask Barbara to respond to that? Um, through you, Madam Chair. Um, I do agree you, you could interpret this, um, this statement to, be, uh, to have similar meaning. Uh, I understand um, the question being asked about the evaluation of the, the um, gifting of land um, and the implications of that versus the regulatory process, and I think the organisation accepts that that advice will be in, important at the right moment. So, like Jill, can we, can, we, can we just ask for, I think the advice being asked for was, is this is a, a motion which effectively is the same as an existing motion, therefore can't be accepted, or is it so something this is, different? This is a standing so, so order. Well, point of yeah, order. Any order issue. To me, it so, reads very much the same. So, so, so can I make a point of order? No, this is supposed to be a replacement of paragraph 7, not an addition to it. Councillor Rush, ah. but the question is whether your replacement is effectively replacing like for like, because oh, okay. it is very clear, and so we're just looking at standing orders and checking because it does read to say the same thing. I'm happy just to let the amendment go so we can vote on that if anyone else wants to speak to it. Councillor Pant, you can speak to it. Can I just um just remind everyone that we're in a public place where the community has come for a request. Um, I will not be supporting this. Councillor, I understand your intentions um, and I have confidence that the officers will be very rigorous in discharging their responsibilities, as is the Trust. Um, but I think we're quite clear that this is just around a principal support. Um, we're not uh, gifting or leasing. Um, and also, I would just like to respond, this is not a privatisation of public space. This is a public building. Kia ora. Can I move the motion be put? Um, I, too, I too will also... Um, I move the motion be put, which is a procedural motion. Yes, yep, so we need to take a vote on the well, procedural motion. That, you need a second for your procedural I motion? I will be one, because I don't want to think about this one. <laughs> <laughs> you, yes, you do. Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah, but only if it's only. If um, so it's have you got you? You can't. The only person who can second your procedural motion is Councillor Sparrow. Sorry. No, no sorry, that's incorrect because it's the procedural motion is the mo that the amendment be put, which nobody has spoken to so, other than Councillor. So Councillor Sparrow is going to second that. Yeah. 
we're just going to adjourn for a couple of minutes just to make sure we've got our procedure right. I was trying to, was trying to save us a couple of minutes.
masks. Reply, reply. So we need a seconder to the procedural motion. That was, it can't be councillor free, you know, no. You haven't spoken to the amendment. Okay. So councillor free, would you like to, um, you're seconding that? I'm seconding that. Right, so we're going to vote on this. Right, reply. No, no, this is on the procedural motion. So this is this is voting on whether we accept the procedural motion to put this amendment to the vote. We're just working out if it's fifty or seventy-five percent. Yeah. So the debate could continue if we vote down the procedural motion. Then the debate can continue on this amendment. So we need 75%, which we have. So that means that we're going to put this to um, this um, amendment to the vote, but you do get a right of reply. I just need to remind you, your right of reply is only to reply to what came up in the debate, which was only Councillor Panner. So you have to be on your toes. You don't have to exercise that right either if you don't want to. Look, um, Look, it, it may be it's a bit of wordsmithing, but it's the emphasis. Uh, the emphasis is quite different in, in the with the amendment. What we're saying here is that we're not in the business of giving away $5 million worth of land at a time when we are very short of money. And so that's why the, the phrasing has been restructured so that we uh, send a very clear signal uh, to the public that this is how we operate. Uh, nevertheless, uh, as time goes on, we get the business case back and we can actually see a, a sketch and so forth. It may well be that it sells itself uh, for a gift. But uh, for, for now, the, the emphasis here is on re strengthening the council's uh, future uh, debate around how this land is transferred and used. Right, so we're now going to put this to the vote. If you're in favour of this amendment, press the green button. If you aren't, press the red button. So that is lost. So we stick with the original um, motion. Now we're back to the substantive. I know that we have a couple of councillors who still haven't spoken. Do you need to speak? You'd like to speak, Councillor Condé. Um, thank you, everyone. I'm, I'm, apologies, I'm a bit unwell, so I'm not going to be as eloquent as my colleagues who have been in support of this. I'm going to attempt to be brief instead. Um, I completely support this project of the Fale, and I really appreciate all of the work the community has done to bring it to this point. Um, I absolutely acknowledge that this site has challenges and risks, but I'm confident that you understand what those challenges and risks are. And I think there's a fundamental question, which is, if not here, then where? It's not like we have a whole bunch of an abundance of land in central Wellington where we could just rock up and easily find an alternative. So I completely support the idea of, of this might not work out and, and let's be thinking about a plan B. But I think if, we, if this is um, a possibility, then it's worth pursuing. So I'm, I'm hopeful that you will rise to these challenges with the persistence that you've shown so far to bring the project to this point. Um, I'm really excited to see uh, a more detailed design once this work has been done so that we can make the further, get further officer advice as we've discussed about what alternative uses for the site might be and whether this is going to be a, a goer going forward so that we can make a final decision on, on the gift or lease or, of the land. So I think, um, you know, I thank Councillor Rusher as a member, and I think it is really important that we're clear about what has and has not been promised today. Um, but I'm confident that we are. I've heard um, during public participation that, that members of the Trust have also um, very clearly expressed what exactly it is that we're agreeing to today. And this is so that the project can move forward, so that we can get more information to be able to answer the questions that we have, so that we can see how you will rise to these challenges and risks, and we can make a final decision. So on, in that um, with that said, I'm just delighted to support this proposal today. Kia ora. Um, so that's all of our speakers um, for today, and I'm remembering that there is an opportunity for a right of reply. Mayor Foster? I'm sure it won't be long, though, will it? It's been a, been a reasonable debate. There's a few things to respond to, so I will do that. Um, but first of all, can I just say again, thank you so much for to the 
uh, fellow Malay Trust and to the Pacifica community for not only for your passion for this, but also for coming here today and um, in support of this. And we will get there. I've got no doubt about that. Uh, thank you also to uh, many of my colleagues. I think there's some beautiful words that have been spoken here, and I'm particularly picking up two concepts. Uh, one is a, a concept which I've always loved, which is Turanga Waiwai, the, the, the place to stand. I think Councillor O'Neill, you used that in particular, uh, and I think that is so important uh, that we all have a place to stand in. Uh, this country and in the city. Uh, and the other one was Councillor Matthews' concept of, of making making a room, and I thought that was a beautiful beautiful concept of making a room. Uh, so thank you, colleagues, for those. Um, as I said uh, earlier, and as several people have said, this look this the um, idea of having a Fale Malay has been a long-standing uh, desire for our, our Pacifica community. I'm going to pick up a few things specifically that people said. Uh, Councillor Fitzsimons, I certainly um, echo your comment about the value of volunteerism. Volunteerism is just so hugely important in our community in every possible way. We would not have a community without volunteering. Uh, you also mentioned uh, a number of challenging projects, uh, and I, but I do want to say to you, I mean, I think the museum stand was plan, is plan A. I think the town hall is probably pl about plan X or Y or Z because we've been through so many different iterations of that and I think Alex Moore is at least you know, option D or C. it's certainly a different building, different size, different scale than it was originally. So a lot of these projects go through a long, uh, a long and tortuous process um, from what an initial concept might be and also reflect that some of them don't actually make it. And I, one that I would uh, highlight, for example, is the Marine Education Centre. Now, I don't know whether that's going to make it or not, but that's certainly been a long, long process. It won't be on the same site that was originally proposed if it happens. Uh, and it's, so, so some of them, it's very, very challenging. Um, and the Chinese government was mentioned as well by, um, uh, I think it was Councillor Pennett. Uh, and again, that is not on the site that was originally, I think it's been knocked around from at least three different sites, and we are now, it's got, so it's got some challenges too. Um, Councillor Young, um, you're right, there is uh, a high bar there, uh, and that is why I mentioned those things around risk. Um, and uh, I, I guess the thing is, uh, for several of you who said this, um, we've got to help it through the process. I think um, the ultimate, ultimately this process will be decided not by us. It'll be, it'll be decided by a court. Uh, because the, the uh, well, assuming that there is any, any opposition at all, the moment you get any opposition to uh, road stopping, if, that, if those objections are sustained, it's the Environment Court that decides. The moment there is a resource consent and it is challenged, it's the Environment Court that decides. So I, I think there's a very, very high likelihood that we will not be the ultimate decision makers on this project, and I think we need to bear that in mind. So whatever our hearts say, ultimately somebody is going to be making this and they'll be making it against legal. Uh, and legal parameters. So while I think somebody said something about pipes and laws and the dream being bigger than pipes and laws, Councillor Thune, um, you're right. But also sometimes laws do make the decisions ultimately, so we've got to be aware of that. Um, Councillor Free, uh, there were a number of people who made comments about um, about being capital city, and I 100% agree with this. We, we've got to make a lot more. I've said that before. We've got to make a lot more of us being the capital, uh, and it is fitting that we have these important places. I completely agree with that. And I think also that the um, the Fotowaka has been mentioned in some of the discussions. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a fantastic location now, much more so uh, than it was at the start, as a place of culture and celebration of uh, indigenous culture. I think that's that's really really special. Um, Councillor Day, I think I've already mentioned things at Round Risk. Uh, Councillor Calvert, um, look, you said that um, in principle, this is saying in principle we support the Bunny Street site. No, it's not actually saying that. What it's saying in eight is that we are agreeing in principle for the Fale Malay Trust to continue investigating the Bunny Street site. That's all it's saying. Is we are giving them essentially the go ahead to say, you keep investigating that particular site. It's not saying that we even support the site. It's saying we note that that is the preferred site that the Trust has. It's saying we agree that in principle they can continue investigating the site. That's all it says. No more, no less. Um, you also asked why not fund the officers to do the investigation. Can I just plead with you all, we will get through our budget process shortly. It's not going to be an easy process. And I think we're all getting to be more aware of this, um, and it will be even probably harder than you think it will be. Uh, so please, let's not start making 
budgetary decisions in isolation from that overall context because it's going to be very, very challenging. I'm quite happy to say that the media's half, half the media's disappeared today, but um, you know, uh, but I'm very happy for us to start saying that because we've got to start people getting used to that. Um, we can't just keep throwing money at everything. But what is quite clear in here, Councillor Calvert, is that this in, in the paper is that this the investigation, etc., is the trust's job and the trust's risk, not councils. Trust job and trust risk. Uh, Councillor O'Neill, can I correct you on one thing? It's a beautiful speech. Um, there's the concept of timeless patience with the council. My understanding from talking to council officers, in fact, we've had very little to do with it. There was a briefing for those councillors who were able to make it sometime, I think it was last year. Um, it might have been the year before. Uh, officers have had very little, um, and my mind is nodding, have had actually very little engagement with this process at all until very recently. So it's not, you know, there are many projects that council can be frustrating and this hasn't been one of them. And so I just think we're going to need to be careful we don't beat ourselves up uh, when, it, when it's not, um, not the case. I know it's been a talk of conversation in the Pacific Advisory Group. I'm not quite sure where that's gone and, and with, uh, how that's related to councils or not, but I don't think there's been a lot of council engagement with it. Uh, you also asked, will we ask questions to the university if they wanted to build a lecture theatre on Bunny Street? No, I don't think we ask questions to the university at all. I think we'd probably just say no. Because, because this actually, there is a process for road stopping and um, it's not an easy process. You know, we see road stopping bits for, you know, that go through our committee, our, our, yeah, our committee process quite regularly. But if they're challenged, it's very hard. It's very hard. And I don't think we've done it very often. Uh, and Councillor Rush, uh, you... Um, yeah, no, I don't think I need to respond to anything there. Uh, I think you're probably just no, about done. I think done, I've done, that. I think I've done all those. We have for now, like I'm morning tea. I'm good. <laughs> cool. So, We're going to put this to the vote, Councillor. I would encourage people to support it. Sorry, just I'll encourage people to support the recommendations. Right. Um, so, are we going to call for a division? Would you like to have eight taken separately? Okay, we will do eight. In fact, maybe we should do the other ones first. Can we do all the others first? Yeah, yeah. and then we'll do eight last. So, so we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine. Practicing by counting. There is the new nine. So voting is open. Yeah. One, yeah, everything except eight. Councillor Rush, could you vote please? <laughs> so it's carried. And now we'll vote on number eight. This is about the site, and there's going to be a division on this as well. So voting is open. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Um, we are going to break for morning tea now and we'll be back, we'll come back at half past 11 um, for um, the debate on Te Whareapodi Street.
Councillor Free. Can anyone just duck out the door and see if Councillor Paul is just outside? Is that your friend? Okay. That'd be good. Is she related to... Um... Councillor Matthews is going to get here. It's not very fair to start early if uh, not everybody's here. <laughs> No, because I gave a time, and I think that's only fair to, to wait for them then. That's, that's being sneaky otherwise. <laughs> okay, so we're now going to move, just to um, councillors, if you want to move to, the, um, to item 2.2, which is on page 25. Um, this is the change of the name, and I don't even like saying the name as it is because it's not correct. Um, but so uh, we'll talk about that now, and I'm going to invite, we have here with us today um, Mark Tilney, who came on Tuesday and shared some um, beautiful whakaro with us uh, about um, Te Ateawa and, um, and Poniki, which was very, um, very helpful. And we also have his daughter, Miriam Tioni, who um, is very dear to me. Um, I worked with Miriam last year through the Tuia program, so um, and, um, it's lovely to have you both here um, representing, um, representing your people. So I'm going to pass to Mark to speak first. Okay. Yeah, um, thank you again for um, allowing us this time and I'd just like to uh, say on behalf of the Wellington Tents Trust and the, and the Palmerston North Maori Reserve how much uh, this um, this uh, in the, this name change means to us. I've already sort of outlined in the, uh, this week about the historical value that it has and also to the uh, position that uh, the person, Te Ari um played in our lives. And just to reiterate, at the time that the New Zealand company came to Wellington, before the arrival of the New Zealand government, he was one of the people here. He was Chief Ariki, and we both descend from him. And we've maintained what they call the mana whenua is what we have because we were here before the Crown. So we class ourselves as mana whenua. Um, we established working relationships with various agencies of the Crown until the government, New Zealand government was formed. And we also were instrumental in the formation of Wellington and Hutt Valley cities. Because our tipuna lived on all of these pits of land that are here. Subsequently, and I just say this just as a matter of thing, a settlement trust was, was formed and that brought in other groupings who are related to us uh, who assert uh, a mana whenua view as well. But anyway, on part, behalf of the, of the two trusts, the land, land trusts, we land trusts because we have land, we own land. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you just uh, considering this matter and you're going to have to put it to the vote later on. Um, I'd also uh, like to acknowledge the, um, my uh, Pacific relations. I know they've gone now, but I know most of them, and uh, Winnie and Paul and all of those others. They've, they've had uh, several discussions with 
factions of ourselves, in particular the two I've just mentioned, and uh, we're in, you know, we, we support their, what they're trying to do. And not only that, because we know that we have been through this process many, many times ourselves in relation to the whare, the, the, I'll, I'll speak general Maori now, the whare, <laughs> the whare waka, or pōneke, that was an initiative that, and you, you know Simon, and you knew you so probably right, Andy was too, um, in those days, in the 90s, um, how much that we had to come to council meetings, put forward our, our views, go through processes. The critical thing that we had to do was to find the money. But that's another point. <laughs> so, you know, we can appreciate that. The Chinese Garden, we also were alongside them when they were trying to do these things. So this is not a strange environment for us. We have worked, the Wellington Tents Trust, Palms North, have worked very closely with, uh, with, with you guys over a millennium. And we look to doing that again, Jill. Thank you. Um, now, so I, I, the, the thing is about, uh, when you look at the, they call it the whale malai. Well, in Māori, that, that, that's, exact, that's Māori words as well, because it's actually whare and marae. So whale malai, and you knew that, so I'm not going to give you a lesson on that. So, and we know what that means for them. So, we have our own relationships with our Pacific, you know, relations, and we will work, keep working those. But anyway, back to the the, the co papa. Um, uh, Anu Smiler was here. He's the chair of the Wellington Heath Trust. He's also working on Maori land law. He had to go back to his work, and uh, he gives his apologies. Liz Mellish, chair of uh, Palmerston North, is the fiftieth Wellington uh, Wendy anniversary is on Saturday. And uh, she's gone home to do some cooking. So, you know, but you know, most of you people, will, a lot of you councillors here will have met, met, met Liz and Captain Anu. So I have really nothing more to say except that very important day for us. We hope that, um, that uh, you know, the council changes. Thank you for the council for making this, uh, for... for putting through the process to this point, uh, and we look forward. And just in the matter of, like I said, it's like not only Mana Whenua, we own quite a bit of property in what a uh, Hale Pauli Street to be. Um, and it'd be so good that, with, if, that when once we may, whatever we put there, it will, the address will be spelt right. And if we need to name it, it won't be at odds with the street. So we'll be naming it, probably it'll be Hari Paul something. Okay, so kia ora, um, nāme i whānui ki a koutou. Uh, I don't know if we'll sing a song, or do you want to sing a song? No. Yeah. Yeah, I'll leave it to my, uh, my daughter, she, 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 she can... Yeah. Or, no, as long as I know. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's with great pleasure that I, um, represent, I present this paper today. Um, e te whānau o te kākapi o te rangi, ko te whare pauri, ngā mahi mai o hā ki a kōrua, ngā mahi mai, mai o hā ki a ki te iwi katoa. Uh, tēnā koutou e te iwi i runga i te kāranga o tēnei rā, uh, te whakatika, whakamana, te ingoa o te rangatira, te, te whare pauri. Um, so thank you so much for coming in today and taking the time. And for Mark, that's two days this week. You've come in and given us your time. So thank you. And shared, um, shared your experiences and your knowledge, which I know is a huge, um, huge knowledge, which we can definitely benefit from learning from. Um, so yeah, thank you. And I also want to acknowledge um, Anne and Holden, who also came in on Tuesday. Um, it's, it's wonderful to have those interactions and that support. Um, I think the first thing I want to acknowledge is that we're all learning. Uh, these, um, you know, through these processes, our learning is um, is going up pretty quickly. But um, we can always benefit from more information, more knowledge, and from accepting that we don't always have it right. And that's the big part of this. Um, I'd really like to acknowledge. Um, 
the officers at this point who have done a lot of research. When I read through the paper, they've gone through a lot of records to look for evidence. Um, and unfortunately, in this day and age, we seem to need to feel that we have to have evidence other than, and, and this is at odds with Te Māori, where our oral storytelling is the evidence. And I think that's where we have to have trust in, in people's knowledge and, and also put that alongside it. But I do acknowledge our officers have done a good job at looking for some evidence, and I thought the evidence was incredibly compelling to see paper back in those days that have the correct spelling of the name to me was very reassuring. Um, and I think the other thing that I've done over the last um, few days and years is to um, to research and learn about these people who um, who were here before us and, and help to pave the way for the people who are here. Um, it was hard for them, um, reading um, about Te Whare Pauri. He had a really hard journey. He was hugely respected by his people. Um, his big challenge was that he wasn't necessarily respected in the same way and he wasn't ever really acknowledged by the government authorities for his money within his people and I think that that's been uh, Mark talked to us about that on Tuesday about how he his life ended with him being very sad and I think that's something that we need to take on board that the process of um, of colonization was really hard for the people who went through it and saw the effects of those exchanges and interactions and in those days I know that it's been reported that he sold much of the land in Wellington but he didn't think that that's what he was doing and this this is the thing that people have to understand, is that when you come in and you're interacting with a culture and you don't know the values of that, that culture, then you can do a huge amount of harm, and that's what we've seen in Aotearoa. So I think it's really important that we acknowledge that alongside this, because Te Whare Pauri in itself is a, is a symbol of, of how we can make things better. Um, so this corridor around um, Te Whare Pauri Street has been um, around for a long time, well before I was in council. I came into council and it was one of the first um, conversations that I had with Nikki Karu, the, um, who manages the Te Rapautama team, and we talked about names that were incorrect and Te Whare Pauri was one that, that kept coming up. Um, e Puni Street is also another one that I think we need to have a look at. It was actually, um, he was Te Puni and another very important rangatira of um, Te Atiawa. Um, so that, converse, that corridor had been happening um, all the way through last training and uh, Mori Love um, was involved in the speaker series in 2018 at the library and um, it was, it was, the attendance was amazing, there weren't enough seats for everybody. People really wanted to learn more about the names and te reo Māori in our city and Mori shared um, some of the um, whakaaro around incorrect street names and, and places in Wellington and one of the people who was at um, at the library um, actually lived in one of those streets and was horrified and came up to me afterwards and said what can we do? I don't want to live in a street that's incorrectly named. And it was beautiful because it was it was community input that really helped us get this moving and people saying we're not comfortable with this being incorrect. So I'd like to acknowledge that person um, and thank them for their, their leadership and, and just quietly, you know, pushing from another angle as well. And I think we need people to be doing that everywhere to say we want this to be better and we want to support, we want to show our support for mana whenua. Um, and I'd like to acknowledge um, Councillor Foon who got into council and really got underway with making sure that this, this paper came to us as well. So thank you Councillor Foon, I know that you're going to speak to this soon. Um, I also just want to speak to the pronunciation. I know that um, Mark also spoke to it on Tuesday, um, that we will hear people say Te Ware Pauri, which is the correct pronunciation for Taranaki Whanui. Um, but some people will also say Te, te Whare Pauri, which is what I would say with my dialect, and that's okay as well. But I think we have to get we have to be okay with accepting those differences and supporting mana whenua to be able to. I think you know the debate around um, Whanganui, Wanganui was very powerful, and um, and we do have more to correct. We have a few names around our city that I think we need to look at. We have um, Korori, which which is um, needing, needing to have a little bit of um, a look over, um, possibly or Hero Road, um, or Hariu, uh, Paparangi, we're not sure about that one, some people think Paparangi, but these are, this is corridor we have to have, and some of them we may have a corridor around it and it's decided that it's fine how it is, but we need to be having this corridor. And the important thing is that we do it in partnership with mana whenua, and we, we're working through the things that are important for mana whenua. So um, I'll just check that I haven't missed anything out. I've written a million notes on different pieces of paper. Um, I would like to acknowledge um, the mahi of, of staff to keep 
to keep this moving because um, you know there are challenges we do have in a situation like this when you're changing a street name it does have a lot of consideration there is a kura, there's a school there um, and I, I acknowledge that staff have done a good job with keeping people informed and supporting them and I think that this um, is wonderful that we've got to the point where people are here and supporting it so um, I'm very happy to um, put this paper forward and uh, Laurie Foon you're going to second it thank you you can speak now if you'd like uh, tēnā kōrua, thank you for coming today. Um, I, I, would, um, I am uber proud to uh, second this paper as a Berenporite. I thank my colleague Tamith of Paul for graciously allowing me to do this. Um, but I, I do want to speak on behalf of the Berenpor community. But just first, um, also I lived on... Te Wadipaldi Street for three years. Um, I am privileged that we were able to buy a house there and actually had my first daughter in the street. So I feel very connected. Um, but actually, without using words, but I also feel a little ripped off because I didn't feel connected to my community and the whakapapa and the stories that um, I wanted to share with my whānau. And so um, to get to this point, to be able to, to see the street renamed is a really important part, not just for me as a parent and a community member, but for our whole community because we need the grounding of this story to, to connect us and to give us pride. Not that we don't have pride, but we can have more pride. And so I know, so I just wanted to let you know that um, our community is in full support. I just want to acknowledge Chloe Bisley Wright, who is here, who has actually had uh, sent many letters to council and even had a naming party so that the community could understand and have discussions around this. But also um, that the Kura is in full support, as is the Berenpore Community Association. Association, and um, I just put the story up on our Berenpore Peeps Facebook group, and it was unanimous that 36 people uh, were overjoyed with words like "great news," "super," "fills my heart with joy," uh, "miharo," and actually, why do we even need to vote? So, actually, that's what I want to bring to you today: is the support of the community we have for this name change, and I am proud to second it. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thank you. I'm Councillor Paul. Um, uh, tua tahi um, ngā mahi nui um, ki ngā rangatira o te ati awa um, o oh, ko uh, oh, no um, Taranaki whanui uh, no um, ngā te tua rangatira hoki um, tua rua ngā mahi um, mai o hā ki kia kōrua um, thank you so much and I yeah, really 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 agree with the points by um, Councillors Day and Councillor Foon one of, now, please don't point out me, but one of the big reasons I wanted to run for council was I remember last year there was a lot of um, corridor around the naming of the Wellington Botanic Gardens, the Paikaka, and some of the, some of the messages that I heard from people who were meant to represent me really, really disappointed me. And so visiting this corridor now, I think, I think of all the opportunities and I think about the sentiment of what's in a name. For me, being a rangatahi, being a young person in Wellington and being able to look at the names around me, both Māori, English, um, all the different deal. When we look around Wellington, if you look to um, Kandala, there are a lot of Indian names there. When you look to Island Bay, lots of German names there. Um, all of these names, no matter where they're from, are full of culture and history and context. And I think that's why this is such an awesome opportunity for us here today. So when I look around me at my own suburb, I ask, I ask, who is Epuni? Kawa Epuni? Kawa Tewaripuri? No, if those names were correct, I would have been able to know and find that history for myself. And I really like this, the direction that this is leading us towards because when we look at when we look at the names around Wellington, they lend themselves to the environmental and cultural history and context. So when we look at Karori, like um, Councillor Day said, we are reminded of the density of birds within Karori, which is no wonder why Zealandia has found a home there. When we look at Tawa and Ngaio, that references to indigenous species of trees that are abundant within those areas. So. 
I want to keep learning and, and I also want to acknowledge within our own ward we have some things we might need to change with Marge Banks Street as another one. Um, Marge, Marge Banks. Um, but um, yeah, I think we've got a lot of work to do and it's not it's not just about PC gone mad. It's about honouring our culture and our history no matter where it comes from and being able to learn from that and do our best as um, governors of the city. So ngā mahi nui kia koru a hoki anō and um, thank you so much for do all of this mahi. Kia ora, Councillor Sparrow. Right, I am completely okay with the renaming of the street. I need to say that at the outset. However, I do wish to make a comment about the westernmost portion of the street. So I think it may have been a golden opportunity for the westernmost portion of the street to have been given a completely different Māori name. From what I've ascertained, there didn't seem to be a particularly strong voice in favour of retaining the same name for the whole street, maybe five households out of 21. Based on the figures we've been given, more than 60% of residents were indifferent based on their lack of response. At our regs meeting yesterday, we were told how important, how very important wayfinding is in terms of avoiding confusion for emergency services, being able to find an address. So as the western port, most portion of the street is physically separated from the street, from the rest of the street by Adelaide Road. With wayfinding in mind, I wonder whether it wouldn't have been logical to have adopted a different name, a different Māori name, with this being the ideal time to have addressed that vexed issue. Thank you, Councillor Fitzsimons. Um, kia ora anō, nā mahi. Uh, as the other ward councillor uh, in Berenpore, I would like to uh, comment on this, and I think it is a very, very important step. We know that in New Zealand, colonisation has a very violent and oppressive history, and we're now looking at ways to restore that and the things that we can do uh, in the future. And I really just want to um, acknowledge uh, Mana Whenua, and Nikki Karu, but especially um, Councillor Jill Day, because as councillors, I think it's sometimes very hard to feel that we're making a difference. It takes a long time to see any projects or decisions that we make around this table actually enacted and meaning anything in the community. But Jill has been a staunch, gracious, and committed proponent of the use of te reo through Wellington and your legacy is very, very clear in our city already and you've barely been on council for any time. And I just know that you're a very, very humble person so it feels particularly important to acknowledge the leadership role that you've played um, and I, that I know you'll continue to play because it is remarkable and you've already made a huge difference in such a short time on council. So I just really wanted it not to go unsaid that you... Um, You've really made a big difference to Wellington, and I know it's just the beginning. Thank you. Um, Councillor... Oh, Mayor. Mayor Foster. <laughs> Can't read. Um, thanks, Jill. Um, look, it's great, it's great to be here, uh, and I just wanted also to add my thanks. Thanks, Mark and Miriam, uh, Miriam for coming in and, uh, and speaking to this. Uh, and thank you um, to Michael and Carleen for all the hard work, and it obviously has been a lot of hard work. I know that, you know, we just say, I'll go away and research something, but these things have got to be usually dragged out of the archives and found. I'm not quite sure how that, that works, but um, it, it obviously takes uh, takes more than a few seconds to go and find these things. So I just want to say thank you for all the work that you've done uh, in the research behind this. Uh, Mark, you said um, you said how much this means to us was the words that you used and I think that's that's really really important I think that we um, names do matter and we've seen so I've, I've said that around this table before in, in other contexts as well you know in the context for example the name of our university uh, names matter to people for a lot of things uh, and so I think it makes it all the more important to do two things one is that when we choose names we do so with care and respect uh, and I think that too many of the names which we sometimes apply are just, oh, yeah, uh, we've got to fill some names, let's just choose a bunch of names. That's really, we should do better than that. Uh, and that's what really our naming policy that we um, approved uh, last year. Uh, and it talks about treasured 
uh, treasured names, treasured, uh, you know, treasured, uh, that concept, treasured Tauranga, ta and that's what names should be. And that means it's so important that we also get them right. Uh, and so if they are misspelled, now some of them, you see Karori, I was going, oh God, you know, that's going to be an interesting conversation if we actually go down that track. Um, <coughs> and we've got to be certain they are right too. Um, <coughs> but in this case, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, and, and so I think it's really important, and I think that the Korero there, um, Mark, uh, uh, and that you say how much this means. Because, it, you know, when it is your tipuna, you know, you kind of want to get it right. Um, <coughs> the other thing I was going to say is that um, our names are an opportunity to tell our stories. And I think, and it's what I said on Tuesday, I, 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 I don't know whether we need an amendment or not, but it's just to say, I was going to say something that we know the council will work with Taranaki Whanui to interpret the new name uh, into Whairapuri Street. And if people are happy with that, I'll be happy to put that up. So look, I'll, I'll move that as, a, as an amendment. You'd be happy to, to do that? To work with council to interpret yeah. to oh, Whairapuri, yeah, Pauri and yeah. The, yeah. Okay, so look, I'm happy to do that. So the words I've got there are just note the council will work with Taranaki. Taranaki finally is the best way of putting it. Yeah, to to, to, to oh, Street, so just how we interpret Wellington Tents. With Wellington Tents to interpret the new uh, name in Te Wairapuri Street. Yeah. So if we're happy to do that. That's taken by Sarah, thank you. Um, uh, so you got that? Cyrus? You good with that? Just working on it. Good, okay. Um, and just that the, uh, so the, the last part I wanted to just say is, um, is just that we, it also gives us the opportunity to do some researching of our past and be able to understand our stories and where we've come from. Uh, and it, there was a, um, some beautiful words which were said the other day, and I've got to make sure I get them right. Uh, I'm not going to get them right today, so I won't try that. Uh, but it was basically walking forwards, looking back. Well, looking backwards, walking forwards, I think, was the, the concept. And I think that's a really, a really powerful concept. Uh, and um, I'm just, just reading in Te Ara, um, the uh, Te Warapuri's um, biography. It's a pretty challenging biography. Uh, you know, he had a, he lived, in, lived in challenging times and was part of challenging times. But it's being able to tell those stories, I think, adds such richness to... I mean, when you just say the street is Warapuri Street, it tells you nothing. Say it is Te Warapuri Street, and you start telling the story behind it, that has such richness, and I think we need to be able to tell those stories. And there'll be warts and all stories with all kinds of our streets, but let's tell them. Sorry to interrupt you again, but can you just repeat the last okay. bit of your um, amendment? Because okay. we've got a few different right. ideas. Note, Council will work with the Tenths Trust to interpret the new name in Te Warapuri Street. To interpret the new name. And that could be on the street sign itself, or it could be in a plaque, or, or I would hope possibly both. Okay. Um, so you've, have you finished? Okay, and Sarah, did you have, you'd like to second that? I would, because it's exactly the point I was going to make, so I'm happy to second it, just speak to the motion. Um, I was at that same meeting where um, Murray Love gave the speech, and uh, the talk, and it was so inspirational, and it made me realise how little I knew, even though my family had been here for as long as European people have been here in Wellington, how little I actually knew about some of these street names. Um, and my family also has names around Wellington, but I'm not so sure if we'll uncover warts and all if we looked into them. So Evans Bay, Adelaide Road, um, Riddleford Street, um, you know, those are the historical names associated with my whanau. Um, but I think it's really, really important that when part of our history that we should be claiming and being really proud of. It's almost that capital city thing. It's how did this city come to be here? This amazing city in many ways. This, this really quite amazing city that's arrived in the last 200 years and found it in so many different and maybe painful ways and yet here we are and I think we can honour and accept and try to actually make something special of it which I see this as an important part of. What I think we also need to be aware of is, you know, the European people got the big important streets, like Adelaide Road and Riddleford Street. And sometimes these streets that were named after very, very significant Māori people are smaller, but we need to make them special. And I think that's the thing about the plaques and the beautification. It's our challenge to make these streets something really special. Um, we, we should not just honour these people by naming the streets with the correct spelling, but actually honour them by spending some money to actually make the street look like something that's really 
um, acknowledging the mana of these very important people, and there are others too, like Apuni, Tipuni, as we mentioned, and also Tafiti Street. Tafiti, I suddenly wondered, who's Tafiti? Kawai Tafiti? I hope I said it correctly. And my goodness me, this man had international significance. This was a spiritual and political leader that inspired Gandhi. You know, this is a person we should really be celebrating, and Tafiti Street is just a little street, but it could be made something quite special. Coupe, the tiny street in Aitautai that doesn't even look like a street, it's so short. And this most important person. So we're only at the beginning of this work. There's a lot more to be done, but I'm very um, positive about the direction we're taking. Would anyone else like to speak to this amendment, or are you happy to vote on this amendment? Okay, let's vote on it. Voting is open. It's unanimous. All right, Councillor Matthews. Tina uh, Kordua, and say hi to your mum for me. <laughs> Um, I <laughs> and your wife. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I, uh, I I guess I just want to. It's interesting. I'm feeling a bit poetic this morning, and I don't know why that is. But I mean, it's interesting the concept of wayfinding, and wayfinding means you have to physically find the way. And as we had a you know reasonably sort of robust conversation at Regs yesterday, Regs got a bit sort of interesting and political as well, which you'd be shocked to hear, um, that uh, as well as for emergency services, there are other ways, there are other ways we need to find and, uh, you know, to, 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 you know, address inequities of the past, to repair relationships, to, to learn about things that we didn't know and to, you know, as I kind of say, is if you, if you know better, you do better. And um, that conversation at the Regs Committee was very interesting because I think, you know, this is a fantastic correction to make. I'm really uh, pleased to support it. I want to acknowledge all the work that has gone into it. But, you know, we've got a lot to do in terms of using Te Reo Māori correctly to name more of our city. And I think we should be using Te Reo Māori uh, names in our city wherever we whenever we can and um, and I want to be part of that as a kind of a you know rising movement in our city and um, I guess I you know also I've been talking with Jill about about Te, te Wara Pauri and his kind of hard life and the you know the dark house and you know I guess when you make the decisions like this that do a little bit it's a small change it's a small acknowledgement but it's a little bit of light <laughs> in the dark house. So um, I think, <laughs> yeah, see some very poetic today. Um, so, yeah, very pleased to support this and kia ora for all the work that's gone into it. Kia ora. Um, so that's all of our speakers. And um, I'm not going to write a reply because I think it's just, it stands beautifully as it is. Um, and I'd just like to uh, mahi to you both again for being here. And, um, and mahi to your tūpuna, te whare pauri. Um, you know, we're, we know that um, this is really significant for Te Aseawa. So thank you. Um, we will vote on the paper now. So we're going to vote on the substantive. Voting's opening. Yes, the amendment's done. Um. And that is unanimous. Um, and councillors, was it? Yes, can we note that that was unanimous? Um, councillors, just um, we need to um, finish with our waiata just to total call this kaupapa. Um, so we're going to do hitaone mi haro. You can come a bit closer if you like.
Right, thank you councillors. We're going to move into the next co-papa very quickly. Thank you, Chloe, for being in here today. And for your mahi, thank you. Very much appreciate it. Right, so we've got a report back on Mayor's trip to Seoul. Have we got a bit of a presentation here, is it? Oh, uh, is it the... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, we've got a lot to say, clearly. Yeah. So, welcome. Um, have we got Nikki? Is it Nikki? Yeah. Cool. And you talk. I'm an Appleton. I'm awesome. from the uh, Korea, New Korea New Zealand Business Council and uh, East Bridge. Cool. Thank you both for coming in um, to talk to us about this. Good. Uh, <laughs> okay, look, I'm delighted to, to present this. Um, there are it's probably two elements. One is to talk about a little bit about the, uh, the visit that Anusha and I made to Seoul in early December, and the other is to talk about progress towards um, upgrading from being a friendly city to being a sister city with, uh, with Seoul. Um, so first of all, it was uh, in terms of the visit, it was a, a relatively quick visit. It was a fly up, three days there, fly back. It was just about three days, yeah, it was about that. So there was a, almost as much time spent in planes as there was being there, but it was a very valuable time. Uh, it was paid for by the uh, Seoul government. Uh, and uh, it, what, what, one of the things that impresses me, this is my second, it was my second time to uh, Korea. The first time was to a conference in Guangzhou. The, South Korea is remarkably um, generous with... Uh, with its essentially its outreach to um, other communities around the world uh, that includes us but it uh, includes communities all around the developed and developing world um, Korea is a country which has very much hauled itself off the canvas uh, they were a, a, an aid beneficiary I think back in the off from us uh, back in the 19. 60s, I think it was, uh, and now I think their per capita income is higher than ours, so um, they are doing some things right. My, my impression uh, of Korea the first time I went was they know where they're going and they are going there. Uh, we, in contrast, are not quite so certain of our direction, uh, and we can learn a lot of lessons uh, from Korea generally. Um, they've also been subject, you know, in terms of saying uh, Korea is a country which um, has hauled itself off the canvas. Uh, you know, most of the first part of the 20th century, they were occupied by the Japanese, and then of course there was the Korean War. So, you know, it wasn't until the end of that that they had to start the, even the ability to be able to put the country back together again. Uh, in advance of the meeting, uh, or in advance of the visit, uh, we had some pre-visit meetings with the Asian New Zealand Foundation, uh, with Ambassador Yeo, who's subsequently left to uh, go back to Korea. He's now being a, a senior advisor to, or the, 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 the key advisor to the Prime Minister. Uh, so a very significant role. Uh, and also we had a visit uh, which I was able, uh, able to host with some Korean um, screenwriters. So they are doing a film which is a joint film uh, between Korea and, uh, between South Korea and New Zealand. Uh, and that film will be partly shot in New Zealand. Uh, and I think you will, I think you will love it. There's some, uh, definitely some, uh, um, uh, some Maori componentry to that as well. And it's going to be a really interesting story that they're going to be telling. Um, in terms of the conference, uh, you, you'll kind of probably laugh a little bit about this. The conference was um, it was the first two days. It was about that was titled "Decent Work City," and it was fascinating to hear the different um, the different experiences of, of countries around the world. The one that particularly stood out for me is the fight that is going on in the United States, of all places, the United States, for paid sick leave. And you scratch your head and think, "Gosh, we've had that for like." Forever, you know, they, they they seem to be so far behind us in some of those areas, and that is, the, and I, I pick that as being the United States was in that that situation. It's also fascinating to um, uh, fascinating to reflect on the different powers that uh, that mayors had in different countries. Some of them are very much more powerful than ours uh, than we are. Um, I was the, the the laughing the laughing bit you'll say is uh, the, the a strong component of the speech that I gave was about the living wage and our um, our role in the living in the living wage city so so <laughs> um, 
We also, um, after that, we also attended a, um, the, a dinner for a peace conference, which was interesting, I was able to catch up. I don't know, some of you may know Alan Weir. Uh, who actually yeah, um, who actually did a lot of work in New Zealand. He's now sort of um, commuting in a sense between uh, Canada and Switzerland. But uh, in this case, in this case, he was in uh, in Korea. Helen Clark was supposed to be at that dinner, but um, she only arrived very very recently, and I think was um, decided to to rest rather than um, rather than go to the dinner. So that was a bit of a disappointment. While we were there, we also met with uh, our High Commissioner Turner. Uh, and we also met with um, Seoul has its own ambassador which tells you their focus on outreach. Um, so we met with Ambassador Yim. Uh, we also had a, a very important meeting with Mayor Park. Uh, now, um, he, he is, uh, you know, Seoul is a city of 10 million. The wider urban area is 20 million. Uh, Seoul mayors have pretty much a 50-50 hit rate in becoming uh, president of South Korea. Uh, so there is every likelihood that he will stand for president, the presidency next time round and may well be president. So having a good relationship not only with the mayor of the by far the biggest city in Seoul in um, in Korea, uh, but also um, the you know prospectively the future president I think will be um, is very significant. He was certainly very very uh, keen to advance the relationship uh, with um, Wellington. And when you look at that, I mean, there are, and we'll traverse a couple of things, but there are so many things which they have potentially to offer us. The, 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 almost the scratching head was what we offer them in return. The kind of things which we talked about which were of interest uh, to us was certainly a lot of the things around technology, uh, which we'll come, come to in a couple of the slides in future, uh, and also uh, in areas of cooperation with, with film, um, transport, those sort of things. Um, they were interested particularly, we have a, um, a Korean community of about a thousand people in Wellington. Uh, we have the K Festival. Um, they were also interested in, um, you know, the, the, the education was important, but I think also we got some opportunities. We, Their education system is very, um, they were, were crazy hard, um, but I think we think, we often think more laterally. And the, that were one of the, the um, organisations we met with was an organisation called WeGo, which again reaches out to, to many different countries around the world. And we said, look, we, we probably need to become a member of, of WeGo and work with them. But our, crea our, crea our Creative HQ is, you know, it's that lateral thinking. I thought Creative HQ was an obvious place to go and say, look, maybe we could do some working together um, using Creative HQ. Um, so we also visited the, the Film Commission. We also had another a repeat visit with um, uh, the screenwriters who had come to visit us in Wellington. Uh, we also, so there we go, um, we also went to the Traffic Ops Centre. Uh, and what was amazing, I don't know what, we, what, what slides we've got in there, but what was amazing was the technology they were able to apply. So now some people go CCTV cameras is a bit of a challenge, but they were able to look at virtually a whole range of different streets in the city to see exactly what was going on there, if there was a problem on those streets to be able to divert traffic around it and away from it. They were able to tell you what the air quality was in any one of their areas, what the water quality was in any one of the, the, those areas, and it's live information. They were able to tell us um, how much money they had received. Oh, sorry, I'll go back, go back one. They were able to tell us how many people were on the buses to the minute, mm. and it would change by the minute. They were able to tell us exactly where the buses were, whether they were, were travelling too fast, too slow, if anybody was speeding on those buses. Um, and they were able to tell us how much uh, fare revenue they'd received on their bus service, and they were a whole public transport service. And I think they've got something like 100 different operators we can't manage to coordinate, but three. Um, they were able to be able to tell us how much money they'd made and how much it cost them to run that last week to the, by the day. That's the kind of level of data and information that they were able to, uh, to access. And it was, that's, that was quite remarkable. Um, so that was the, one of the things that I thought we could, um, we could gain a lot from. And one of the other bits was, and I've tried to sort of access this from New Zealand, I'm not sure if you can, I've just I've tried it, but, but certainly for citizens. So we went, when we went into um, uh, to meet Mayor Park, uh, the, there was a, a huge, huge screen there that citizens could go and access, and they could see this data and be able to access it. So it's publicly available information, which I thought was quite remarkable. Uh, so I think we've got a couple more slides, so if you can flick through the other slides. 
I was just showing it the thing. No, I think there's a video on this one. Oh, no. Does that one actually show the video clip? No, so I've got to show the video clip. It's, cool, it's a cool toy. Does it have, oh, does it got, got sound? Probably leave the sound out, but. So these, 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 are all, these are all CCTV cameras that are showing you what's going on in these particular situations, but you could put on their air quality, water quality, whatever it is that you wanted to. Um, just incredible data that they had available at their fingertips. So um, uh, so the, the paper really is to, um, to reflect back on the, the visit that we made uh, and to ask uh, you to agree in principle to progress work on upgrading the relationship to assist the city with sole metropolitan government. Now, I'm the first person usually to look at these things and say, I want to see an economic context to them. I have absolutely no doubt that this one would have a significant economic benefit for us. Uh, the question is how much economic benefit we, or how much benefit we can give back to our Korean community. I think they are being very generous to us, so um, I would encourage you to say yes to this, and then hopefully uh, so, um, Seoul will be able to do likewise. I move. Actually, the paper's meant to be moved by Councillor Free. You were meant to be doing the presentation. Um, <laughs> that's, that's fine. Look, the only thing I want to add is the other big triumph for the Korean community has been the um, gold of uh, the um, film Parasite that won the Oscars, four different Oscars, actually, and is the first um, non-English film to win Oscars. So, look, I'm very happy to move these recommendations. I think we've had an excellent presentation. Hang Thank on, you. Councillor Free. What I was going to do was just to see, because that was a presentation that the oh. Minister was doing, were there any questions that Councillors had around this paper process? Oh, OK. OK. <laughs> OK, all right. Um, so uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about my experience um, helping Councils manage their international partnerships in, in East Asia. As, as from wearing my Eastern Bridge cap, but also the Korea Business Council cap. So I think uh, sister formal formal city to city relationships uh, can be a really good enabler, uh, and councils can, can lead that. Um, they by having that formal relationship, you get a range uh, much greater access to to the reciprocal government councils, and uh, um, as previously noted, uh, mayors in many cities in Asia, well, particularly Asia, are often far more powerful than their counterparts in, in New Zealand. Um, so by getting access to the um, higher level local government officials in those, those cities, uh, you can leverage a lot more benefits from them. I think it's important uh, that if a relationship is, is formalised and developed, that it's actively managed, because the only, reason, the only way you're going to get positive, whether it's economic or community um, development results from it, as if, it, if you do actively engage and manage those relationships. Um, I actually think that probably most of the, most of the things were covered, but is there anything? Um, I just want to speak to a couple of key points um, in terms of the success that we're already seeing in our industry uh, alongside Korea. Um, so we're all very good friends, and as Andy um, mentioned earlier, we've had uh, a writers' exchange with Korea for a number of years um, that's supported by my office and the New Zealand Film Commission. Um, obviously, we've got a co-production agreement with Korea as part of the, the trade agreement uh, that New Zealand negotiated, and that's been used a number of times, um, particularly for animation and visual effects. Um, so outside of the Miramar group of companies that we know and love, there's also an industry that um, that, that has access to um, a New Zealand co-production um, incentive. Uh, and that requires equal creative partnership from both countries. Um, Korea specialises in high concept, what we call high concept or genre content, uh, and so do we. Um, we're, we're very good, um, I guess, bed fellows in that, res in that regard. Uh, so there's a lot of alignment there. Um, and actually, as it turns out, we had a workshop worked on Parasite. Um, and the filmmakers that we brought out last year, that Andy Met and Sol, also um, were involved in that project. Uh, there's three um, productions that have come out of that visit alone, uh, and the Kiwis who went to Seoul um, in 2018 have a TV series they're developing set in Seoul 
um, as a co-production that's going to be made with the help of HBO Asia. So already we're seeing really great outcomes from that um, and it's quite frankly from our industry's perspective a bit of a no-brainer really and um, we'd love to see it happen. Thank you. We do have a few questions. We've got Councillor Rush, Sparrow and then myself. Um, uh, just picking up on your comment that it's a highly developed and wealthy nation, so has it moved from being a developing nation under the United Nations climate change legislation to being developed? Do we know? And part of that question is, second part of that is, will this involve a lot more international air travel between our nations and <laughs> that completely eliminate all savings that Wellington can make in reducing emissions. Well, it bounced to develop. I've, I've, never, I've never heard reference to it being a developing country. It's always, people always talk about South Korea as a developed country. Um, also, it, it, we, our recent designation is City of Film. We are part of a membership of 18 cities, and Busan is one of those. Um, and I'm, I, I can't be sure of this, but I'm not sure that they would have that designation if they weren't considered um, you know, developed. In regards to air, um, airlines and flights, um, currently there's there's already um, I think two two airlines which have direct flights between New Zealand and Korea. They both fly into Auckland Auckland Airport. That's Air New Zealand, and I think is it Korean Korean Air. Um, I, I don't know if there would be the um, the market to, to open up another airline <laughs> another route between the uh, between the two countries. Not not in the short term anyway. Cool. Next question, Councillor Sparrow. This is questions on the report. Yeah. Okay. Well, the the, the report here talks on a, at least a couple of occasions about, for a start, about the number of um, Korean students declining over the years, the numbers coming to study in New Zealand. It talks about the number of tourists um, decreasing over the last ten years. Is there an ex explanation for this? And presumably, if we formalise a sister city relationship, that won't necessarily make any significant difference to, to that. Well, it all. There's two questions. Any explanation as to why the decline, the decrease over the years? That's the first. So the uh, Korean economy has been a little bit subdued over the past years. It's still still growing and growing growing well. Um, but there's, there's not quite as much optimism as there was going back a decade ago. Um, but I think um, that, that's not going to be a, a long-term phenomenon. Uh, in regards to a sister a formal relationship, um, that formal relationship could be used as an enabler to promote Wellington as a tourism destination as, a de as well as a destination for international students. Um, but it comes back down to the management of that relationship. Certainly, one of the things that they were particularly interested in. We, I mean, we regarded we regarded as a safe a safe country. Mm. We have, and we, in fact, it was interesting. Um, sometimes you get very direct um, business um, outcomes from some of these uh, relationships, and it's one of the, relatively recently the, we had the first one out of Sakai, which we I think had been very much a, a cultural um, uh, relationship, and that was um, with um, a company which is going to bring pipes. Um, yeah, there were, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Council. Oh, it's me. Oh, um, I was going to ask about WeGo because um, when I went to um, Korea, I was heavily. Um, what do you call it? Uh, no, I wasn't actually. <laughs> um, I was lobbied. That's what it was. I was lobbied for us to join WeGo. Where are we up to with that? Is that something that? Because Andy mentioned it, so I just wondered if that's something that's in the pipeline or. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, we work and we send the uh, sole government on the uh, membership at the moment. I think it had some great benefits, um, particularly for us, as Mayor Foster said. Councillor Panna. Um, so just for transparency, um, Tom and I have had a conversation about some of the wording around Korean students. This is the day for um, dealing with attitudes towards uh, particular groupings of people. So I just think the wording wasn't quite right. We just we want to be very welcoming towards um, people from other countries, obviously. So that's just going to be reworded if, if that was picked up. Um, look, um, just about around the general sister city thing, this is another one that we're adding on. and I've got no problem with that. It's good to have good relationships uh, with people. 
but is there a point at which we've got too many? Because these all have to be managed and nurtured. I, look, it's, I think it's a very, very fair question. Um, and that's one of the things which we will be thinking about as we uh, review our economic strategy and the international relations strategy will sort of fold into that. Uh, is And we'll think about that regionally as well. Um, are there places where, as a region, we might say, well, one city or the other might want to have a relationship in a particular part of the world that um, we don't necessarily want to duplicate those. So we do need to think very carefully about when we actually enter into relationships. I think if you started again from scratch, you probably wouldn't have some of the ones we've got at the moment. But um, I think this will be one that you probably put right at the top of the pile of those we, which we've got in terms of the potential benefit to us. Yeah. Thank you. That's all of the questions that we have about the paper. So thank you very much for waiting through all everything this morning and um, sharing that with us. We appreciate you taking that time. Thank you. So, Councillor Free, you've kind of already spoken, but yeah, do, yeah. do I, I, I? I'm just putting the um, recommendations. Do I have a seconder? I think Mayor Foster was going to say. Mayor Foster, and you shall we speak yet, vote? Please, so. yeah. oh, I think we've got a few oh, people we've got to speak. We've got all some right. people on speaking order. Okay. Um, so we've got Councillor Matthews. Yeah, yes, I'm, I'm very pleased to hear that we have been skiting uh, internationally about our role as a living wage city. Um, and, you know, the, the, it's um, good to hear that this is of interest internationally. I just want to make, a, we do need to clarify in point 17 on page 8 of the paper that we are the first city in New Zealand to adopt the living wage, not the first city. Um, the modern living wage movement has its roots in Baltimore with cleaners there, but also there's like places like a little, little place you might have heard of called London, which is a living wage city, um, and I think they got there before us. Um, and also just to note that um, the the living wage movement will be bringing accreditation is not the end of our journey uh, in terms of the living wage, and uh, the living wage movement will be putting to us that we need to do more in terms of our events uh, projects, um, and you know uh, to basically lead the way in terms of having a living wage city beyond, you know, our council. So um, that challenge will be put before us, I think, over the coming months. Thank you, Councillor Fitzsimons. Yeah, I just wanted to um, also endorse the comments that have previously been made and, and really um, respect and endorse this relationship going forward. I just wanted to pick the Mayor up on comments he made about how shocked he was to hear about the fight for paid sick leave in America and bring that a little bit closer to home. In fact, right at the doors of Wellington Water because at that, that very place we have a situation where a labour hire company worker was violently unwell from working with sludge, which is a notifiable illness and has not entitled to paid sick leave. Uh, and in New Zealand, there is a six month stand down for employees until you're entitled to paid sick leaves. So it's not only a problem that affects uh, workers in America, but it is a problem that affects workers right here in New Zealand, including workers who are paid for uh, through the, 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 the this council and, and, and contracted. So I do hope that his mayoral task force will look at the issue of unpaid sick leave as it affects contract through Wellington Water and around the city. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we'll just we'll stop there. No, it's not, it's not a point of order. So, um, right, okay, order, order, order. Stop, just stop. Okay, um, I'm going to speak now. Um, I would just like to. Um, speak about it from a personal experience. So in 2018, I had the good fortune of going to um, South Korea, to Seoul, and um, it was it was a truly amazing experience. And the big thing I've written on my piece of paper here is Manaki Tanga. Um, the Koreans know how to look after people. They are hugely caring, and they connected beautifully with um, the Kapahaka group that I travelled with. And um, the one other thing that I really got was that Koreans work really hard. So they, they pride themselves on how they look after people and they pride themselves on their work. And I agree with Mayor Foster that we will benefit greatly and probably more than they will from this relationship. But I know that they will get um, a lot of um, reward out of knowing that they are connecting with another country, which they do high and um, hold in high regard. Um, and I agree they have hauled themselves off the canvas. I think you've um, articulated that well. And the one thing that struck me was when a problem, when there's an issue in Korea, 
area, they come up with a solution, and they come up with a really good solution, and then they market it to the world, and they know how to do that. And I think that we could learn a lot from that. So um, I got to go to Topas, which was truly amazing. The only thing that was slightly concerning was that the detail that they could zoom in on, you could see people walking on the mountains around the edge, they could zoom in, and you just go, wow, this is the, the definition is pretty amazing. But, but really, really amazing what they can see in real time and how they can how that can influence how traffic is managed and it means their public transport system is out of this world. Um, and um, something else I was going to say. I'd also like to acknowledge Tom, who's worked incredibly hard on this relationship, and um, thank you for the work that you're doing. I know that it's appreciated by us and by also by Korea. Um, I had I was fortunate to be able to spend about a week with the Korean Foundation, and this is where the Manaki Tanga comes in. They looked after us really well, but they also took us around. I got to go to the demilitarised zone, which was a pretty, um, pretty amazing, very humbling experience. Um, but I think it's really great because Korea is, it was particularly Seoul, is really trying to work hard to bring communities and bring them together. While I was there, there was a friendship festival, and the whole co-papa of that for them was to bring the world together. And they had um, cultural groups from everywhere performing. They didn't have to do that, but it's and they were they were paying for most of those groups to get there as well. So our group was paid to be there. And I think that if we had more countries in the world and cities in the world that were thinking about how to bring people together, we could look at um, at Seoul. And I'd also like to acknowledge the work of Ambassador Yale. He's done an impressive job um, in New Zealand and um, I think you know we're, we're incredibly grateful for the work he's done so I'm really happy to support this paper. Um, Councillor Paul, you'd like to speak? Um, I was uh, pretty alarmed when I read the, um, this paper and saw that the City Council over there are in charge of um, public education and correctional facilities. Yeah, I'm glad that's not our responsibility. Um, <laughs> I just want to touch on this point about distinctiveness, and I really, really, really do like um, the direction that Seoul's going in. I love their investment in technology. I think we can do better investing in green technology um, and have more incubators and accelerators for tech here in um, Wellington. I think it's a really um, exciting opportunity. I think thinking, this made me think a lot about what makes Wellington distinct and I think we should really be proud of being a green capital and we should really be heading in that direction because the paper talked a lot about technology but I think perhaps we could lend our advice on how they can do things like regenerate their forests or bring back um, native species. So um, I'd like to see us looking, um, I know this kind of leads on to the next paper, but looking at being able to support internationally and being global leaders in increasing density of native forests within metropolitan areas, um, being being world leading in planting carbon sequestering um, greenery and having water sensitive urban design. Um, I think that's a way that we are distinct and I, and I hope we can develop that so we can be as strong as Seoul and so we can take some tips from them. Kia ora. Kia ora. Very good for Carl. Um, so that's the speaking um, list. Did you want to speak now, Mia Foster, or do you feel like things have been pretty well? Only thing I would say, um, Jill, particularly um, your experience in the Manaki Tanga, I think really is, is very, very strong. It's, I just can't stress enough that it's an incredible generosity at a civic level, and I think also very warm people to people relationships. So I think we will benefit a lot from that. Yes, totally agree. Um, would you like a right of reply? I don't think you need to. Okay, we're going to vote on this now. So that's carried unanimously. Right, so we're going to truck on through now to the um, next paper, two, item 2.3. I know, it lunches at 12.30. The only other thing we... Oh, no, we can't change the order now. No, we can't. Um, actually, we could just we could do lunch now and then come back at 5.2 because it sort of seems a bit silly to start this, introduce it, and then stop. Yeah, so we'll, start, we'll stop for lunch now. We'll come back at 5 to 1. Thank you, everybody. Supposed at every LT and councillor every time. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you.